Type of it's not a school zone. Exactly. They would never ride a car in a nah, school zone. Nah. <laughs> nah, they wouldn't do that. Not over there. They're not disrespecting the guard like that. <laughs> they would never disrespect, disrespect those kids' yo, education. Yeah, yeah. God, they wouldn't do that. Great. School ain't even in session. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that shit is. What are you talking about? This they, is great. They from the Zoomies. Yo, before the mics went on, we was talking about cars and shit. I said to them all, I, I can't wait till he gets a car. And part of why I said that. I got my George Jefferson now. Now I know how LeBron feel again. <laughs> again? <laughs> when was the first time the you first felt time like you felt Bronny? <laughs> Took a challenge to Miami. That's when you felt him. <laughs> I play for you. Okay. I play for you. I'll let you know. Huh? Roy was Roy was thirteen when I said it. Something like that. It's young LeBron, but it's still room for Darko and Carmelo. I, I did. I gave. Joe was giving him that sauce. Darko. You don't no, know to rap Darko. Dark, <laughs> Darko had a great career Darko, from that second pick. Darko Miller. Remember Darko Milicic? Uh, yeah. Pist- Pistons, Pistons Darko. came up. I remember they bought Darko to room. Come on, man. It's How old you? 12? Come on, man. Now niggas just think I be potting. Niggas just think they I'm forgot a about you. Damn. Uh, come on, Darko. Darko. Darko <laughs> Milicek. Who's that dude? Rory's Darko. So anyway. no, he's AK-47. <laughs> if you ever call me Darko Milicek when he was called Sean Bradley, we're going to fight. <laughs> so I wanted this, I wanted Maul to get a car because I feel like, you know, Maul is, is guarded and sheltered and shit. So I feel like certain moves will help me clown his personality more. Like, it, <laughs> it don't matter what car he get. Still jokes coming? Oh, I'm killing him. <laughs> but that's him. what niggas is supposed to I am killing him. You have to get like a, a, a X8? A, X he going to get the, something the biggest weird. X? He, he, he getting something where the gas pedal raises. Like he wanted them. Just he need the gas, gas pedal up high. Yeah. Like he needs he got the, weird. the light <laughs> emblem when you open the door. <laughs> Harry, you, you feel me? He got weird requests like that. No. He want the seat to go up higher than it normally goes. Shit I like think that. that's standard now, but it's okay. That's standard in every car. I mean, I seen you inquiring about uh when Tom Brady posted his old Escalade. You was like, "Ooh, that's the swag I need." And Meek, you, you wanted me- to use you Escalade Meek from old Tom? shit. I wanted Meek. You wanted old Meek shit. old Escalade, yeah, oh, right? Po- no, post for wrong. inspiration. Remember? Um, no, I don't. Remember. What you would have told him, huh? Nothing. I don't want nobody. <laughs> Dreams and nothing. nightmares on repeat. Y'all are stupid. <laughs> what you think Meek used to ride around in? You guessed it. This. <laughs> but tell, no, you think I would tell somebody? That? I don't know. What tell us, Shorty, when she get in the car, like, I don't yo, know what you said. You know you stole you know you this when you get in your. You know home. you stole this. You guessed it, Mills. So Maul was saying Mills. that <laughs> that is who Rory want to, a used car from, Jay Mills. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Mills. <laughs> look, look, shout niggas out. I like Jay Mills. It's my nigga. Who I hit trying to buy that used car? Um. <laughs> One of them giant niggas. That was Dion. Dion he was on defense. But boy, that car was beautiful to me. Anyway, Maul said he'll buy a car when he gets a safe place to store it because he's worried it's that reasonable. people will take it from him if he, <laughs> if he's else. parking on the street. That's what I heard. I mean, I'm not, still I'm not, a reasonable I'm not thing. saying what you said. I'm saying what I heard. Okay, that's what you heard. Okay. You don't want to. Didn't he park say he needs nice a car? garage? He needs a garage. Yeah, Why do absolutely. people need garages? Because if you have a nice car, you don't live somewhere where parking is terrible. Can't find a park. You got to keep circling the block. Yeah. Keep, nobody want to keep doing that. Oh, when it I snows see, like it just did, I it should get snowed in. I see what he did. He took the wind off the front. I heard it like, because yeah. when you get parked, it's terrible. When you get parked? It's terrible. <laughs> when they knock it's you out? It's terrible, right? <laughs> Niggas drive off with your shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, money. <laughs> <laughs> when you get parked, it's, yeah, terrible. it's terrible. It was parallel parked. Yeah, that's horrible. Nigga lay you out in front of the building. Oh my God. <laughs> in front of your building? Look at me. Yeah. Now you got PTSD every time you oh walk, walk out your own house. Nigga knock you out in front of your building. That's, <laughs> that's over. Tough. That's, that's you a tough life to home. live. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. go home no more. Now you, was, you was at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's what sucks. And who would be knocking you out in front of your building? Like a neighbor? Uh, that, so, that could so, someone that happen. had to drop. Or someone that conveniently saw you park your X7 in front of your crib all nonchalantly. 
Mm. Thought, he, thought he was looking at him parking like it's safe. <laughs> yeah. We go outside and knock him the fuck he thought, out. He thought it was a school zone, so it's okay. <laughs> that was the craziest excuse I ever yeah. heard. Yeah. That's how it go. Bad. But no, it's bad parking over there because after a certain time, teachers leave, it's over. No parking. Here parks, battery in there. Let's see if it gets charged up now. <laughs> you didn't like that line? You heard him. You heard clown it. The artwork was clown was, was a charged up clown phone. It. I, I liked it. Clown it. I'm here. Clown it. They got to deal with me. I went to Detroit. <laughs> they got to deal with me now. I went. Came out back there. with some energy. I went out there. Come on, man. Went out there. Did the lot. Did, did the knowledge. Uh, give us the uh, the eight yeah, what, they put, what they put you onto. Chill, chill. Got some Jets oh, pizza. Song, Checked in with Church. I did get some Love Jets. Jets. Yeah, that's my shit. I did get Royce, some. Royce put me on to that shit. The jalapeno on there and all that shit. That shit. They got oh, a um, the sunny gym. Detroit pizza spot in the city now. Yes. Detroit style, yeah. I had the sunny gym. Mm. Hey, yo. The sunny gym? It's a pizza, Rory. I'm just You can get the gay yo. thoughts. It's been week I 93 with you. didn't say anything. On the gay thoughts <laughs> popping up I just said, hey, yo. <laughs> yo, push the table back. Come on, let's just do it. Let's get to it. <laughs> Yo, come on, let's get. But help with a nigga move the table. Like, yeah, nah, nah, get that side. Get that side. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, then let, and let's get it on, nigga. Fuck that. That's how you know niggas. Oh, you move the table. It's a smoothie. <laughs> hey, yeah. No fighting, nothing down here. You know what I mean, let me get back healthy. Just vitamins. Let yeah. me get back healthy on these dudes. All right, hold up, man. Let me pay some, pay some homage. Pay some homage right quick. Let's see okay. if this thing is on. Come on, man. This on. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. No need for an introduction. Y'all know who it is and y'all know what time it is. High vibrations, high frequencies only. Let me get the EQs right on my guy. I'm just sitting here with a few right. familiar faces. Some of y'all know what time it is. Okay. At the Rango wow. used to be the B. He's passed on this intro. What happened? Premonition. Hate when it happens in rap. Uh, yeah, I hate when it happens in rap. Is he marketing the colleges here? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Alpha Phi Alpha, Ski Wee. Hey! Shut out, Sahai! Way to start a fucking album. No, 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 Microphone check, one, two, what is this? The JBP Boys Bike to Business, episode 420, high vibrations, high frequencies only, no need for an intro, y'all should know what time it is, shout to our first and last time listeners, gang is back, Rory is here, Maul is here, Parks is here, Erab is here, Savon is here, Alex the Great is here, I want to shout out to the app that powers us empowers us sponsors us tolerates us puts up with us none other than the greatest app in the world cash app gentlemen how's everybody doing 
How you feeling? What's going on? Good. Talk man. to me. How was your weekend? What's happening? Uh, weekend was a little uh, eventful, but everything's cool. Eventful weekend. Yeah. yeah. What happened, Ma? Uh, my, my my apartment got flooded, but <sighs> lost mm. lost Just karma because you used to flood the streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. Rory worked used on that to. one for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just said it. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. It's, it's, it's no, cool. that was pre-pro. But yeah, nah. Other than that, it's, it's cool. Right. You know. He was writing down his notes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen him in his phone. Scribbling in your notepad, created yeah. your life. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. <laughs> is that, hey, is that what Parks thinks of Rory? <laughs> he scribbled in his notepad, and created his life. Yeah. <laughs> Who showed you a first tech, Rory? Uh, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't large. It wasn't on the large professor tour. I'll tell you that. Um. So you, you shit got flooded. You said? Yeah. Yeah. Crib got flooded. Um. Lost a bunch of my sneakers and some clothes. But Damn. it's all good. I'm not tripping, man. That's I saved the holy grails though. Mm. I had to get out the shower. I heard I yeah. the alarm was going off. I didn't you know. Just what was felt going something on. about the holy grails was like happening. Yeah. I grabbed it. Yeah, the important people, sneakers. The some... important pieces you got to grab. Sure. Oh, so I thought I... you meant the whole album. No, that's in my phone. My phone was safe. Thought, my you, phone. Went to, thought you went to grab the whole the disc, no. the CD, the, the holy the grip. physical, not the, the vinyl. Thought he had the vinyl. Oh no, not, not the album from the Samsung phone. Yeah, nah. No. I had to grab the, the most. You saved the Android. Sneakers. Yeah, <laughs> you grab the most important sneakers and make sure. Look what Maul grabs in it. In a flood. Man. Not, not a family member. No. Not I was a home picture. alone. I was home alone. <laughs> nigga, nigga, niece was dying. I grab- dying. <laughs> nah, I grabbed my passport. I grabbed the most important sneakers and made sure they was in, in plastic bags. Because that's, that's all back. you need to travel. That's it. Shop when you land, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I wasn't was, tripping. I was still able to put a fit together with some rares on the wheels. Mm, yeah, right, you know, these, right. are one, these are one of the few that made it, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> one of the few that made it. Now, is the so. fray on the Nike check from the flood, or that was that was predestined? Nah, this is predestined right here. Okay. That's the, um, these are the Black History Month, so I believe these are the blood of my ancestors, so watch them out. That's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go over here. <laughs> Watch him out. You know what I'm saying? Say it, Joe, look how the white side is. It's still Black History Month. I know it's March, but don't get it twisted. It's Women's Month, too. It's always Women's Month. Of course. Every month. We love the women. Yeah, it's always Black History Don't month. deflect That's from the blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, they're still yeah. trying to take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black yeah, women. I love yeah, black, women. black women. Don't say women, women, but black women. Black women month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Big one up right now, then. All of them. Smart. I like him. He's ready. He's God's focused right here. I hate Azalea Banks' love list. <laughs> We're back to another list of hers. I hate her. Love you list. Put out another list. Did you see her list? No, no. See her list. It's a list of. Lo- Wait, did I finish intro on this shit? Y'all was good. Well, y'all. No, 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 no. no. Let's, <laughs> let's stay right here. What's the love list? Yeah, we talked about them already. Don't worry about. Are it. you listening? And shut up. And who's do who's spelling the words on our subtitle on YouTube? Enough now. Who is it? It's you. It's snug nose. It's snug, it's snug it's, nose. It's snug, snug nose. nose. Huh? Yeah. That's YouTube. YouTube yeah. is doing it. I'm so confused. You talking about like closed captions? On sometimes? the clip, yes, the closed captions. That is that's not a person doing it. Yes. Who is it? It's Drew. Drew. All right, got it. We're gonna talk about. It. I'll call Drew later. Yeah, look, teach somebody uh, call him. Teach him. Wait a spell. minute, Azalea put out a love list, and I'm not on it. No, I don't like that. Yeah. That's a little crazy. Azalea Banks uh, was told by her cord cutter healer. A uh, holistic person that sh- she spends so much time hating. Why doesn't she make a list of people that she loves? Mm. So she did that, and I agree with that. Sometimes writing things out really helps. Really, just helps things. It does. Mm, definitely um, does. So she wrote down a list of all the people that she loves, and I hate who she loves. Why? There's some, there's some, yeah, there's some lovable great, people. Some I, lo- I love about. Styles P. Yeah, and Joe Scott. Jewels. And Whitney Houston. Oh, lamb, she loves lamb chops. You love all, Jewels. All, all this podcast does is step on my opinion. Thank no, you for we that. Just, we just thank you for, we just, we thank just you for highlighting opinion. the people that y'all love. No, but, I that, but that's what we should do. I love to okay, on the list. But, but you said you hate, you hate her list. I'm talking about her love list why as do, a whole. Why do you hate her love I list? I hate it. Even why? the names that I love, I'm mad that they're mixed in with some of these names that I hate. So if you guys take oh, a well, minute. Oh, who do you hate? If you, well, who cares? If you guys just take. The people. If you, you, guys, if you guys just take two seconds to observe this podcast. the list. I observed it. Larry and David. And you came away with an opinion, which is your name is not there, so you hate it too. I see. I feel some type of way. I'm not gonna say I, I understand. Now you guys take a second to observe the list, and you guys tell me how you guys feel about it. I hate it. I hated it. Name number four: Donald Trump. 
All right, cool. Wait, wait, watch your mouth, buddy. <laughs> well, she kind of put more there. I mean, which is cool until I get to Ella. <laughs> it's cool until I get to Ella Fitzgerald, and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> there's some hypocrisy. <laughs> Dude, these names there's, don't matter. There's, well, there's hypocrisy. She loves this. everywhere. She loves everywhere. Then I went further, and I was like, Shakira, nah, I dig it. I understand. What other names I had a problem with on here? Da, 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 da. What I did come away with is she likes very colorful personalities. Like, look at the people. They, uh, Billy Idol, Cam, T-Pain. There's a lot of really colorful personalities on here. Yeah. Look, Candace Owens, Alma Rosa. See, I don't I don't mind that, but reading Shaka <laughs> Vladimir Khan. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> reading, reading. <laughs> Wait, see, <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> oh, yo, Zillia's the greatest, man. <laughs> AB is the fucking greatest, man. Wrote, this list is crazy. Yo, yo, going just that that list from Vladimir and then right below it, Amber Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Love is everywhere. I Love. can see how you'd follow up. Nah, on the range. Look at the range. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, Vladimir and Amber Rose have the same haircut, so it's all good. Y'all don't think it's a problem when somebody could fit everybody they love on one sheet of paper? <laughs> We'll also define Don't love. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Moving right along, man. Versus, right? <laughs> Everybody love on one shit. Right? <laughs> it's my, cool. Mine wouldn't be shorter than that. Y'all don't have to worry yeah, about my, it. My list I could be, easily fit all I, the people I love on a sheet of paper. On a sticky pad. <laughs> it would have been a sticky pad for me. I could not, write that on the palm of my hand. True. That is <laughs> well, not true. I know, I know. Well, not in the love. This appears to be people that uh, she admires. I don't know about love. Yeah. She don't know all these people. Omar, um, Omarosa and Sister Soldier being in the same column. <laughs> I like it. Absolutely. It's range, man. You wouldn't understand. Look at the range. Versatile. Jocelyn Hernandez. Come on, man. She's entertaining. Dennis Rodman. I got it. All right. I didn't want to start there, but just just yeah. quick little Shout highlight. Shout out to Azalea. Azalea. She's on my love list. Oh, I love Azalea. Great. Great person. She's on mine, too, via mail. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be direct communication between her and I. Snail mail. <laughs> we'll be pen pals. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, learned my lesson there. All right, the moment. Don't you do it. Introduce the next topic. Okay, sorry. Are we going? Going here? The, yeah. Okay. All right, the moment that Rory waited his whole life for. That's true. And didn't even catch it live. <laughs> <laughs> totally forgot about it. No, I remembered it. I, I was just in a place that didn't have Wi-Fi at the time or good 5G. Mm. Uh, but I did go back and watch it. Uh, D'Angelo's versus kind of. D'Angelo. With friends. D'Angelo versus desk. D'Angelo <laughs> versus live streams. Mm. Here's the thing. <laughs> if you're going to change your entire structure of your platform... For an artist, it you shouldn't rush it with someone that waits 14 years to put out an album. This person takes some time to put things together. This entire thing felt rushed to completely change how Versus goes and then rush it, I think, was the bad move. I don't care who the artist was, period. This felt rushed, didn't feel together, felt like y'all scrambled. The friends thing didn't even feel friends-ish. There was a lot of friends. Felt awkward. We were the friends. I don't know. Him. You don't Big know fan. You don't know if you're his friend. Big fan. I'm about. Know. I'm about growing versus where it's not just one song versus one song. There's other ways to do it. I get all that, but don't just rush it when you're changing how this platform has worked and thrived so far. This was you not, didn't need to rush it. This was not entertaining. You you didn't need to rush it. I was not entertained. I understand mm-hmm. that maybe D'Angelo, you had him for that week, and when you have D'Angelo for a week. That's the only week you're going to have them, maybe for 10 years. Still don't think it was necessary to do. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, It was great when we found out D'Angelo was doing the verses only because we haven't seen D'Angelo or heard from him in a few years, or quite a long time, actually. Um, But then as it got closer and the Friends wasn't announced, we started some thinking, and it was like, okay, what exactly is happening? Mm -hmm. And... We spoke to Mr. Larry Jackson, and he told us, and he called him a snow leopard, I believe. He's a snow leopard, yeah. A unicorn. About yeah. two or three times he called him a unicorn and told us to buckle up and prepare for the ride of our lives. <laughs> he did not say buckle up. I think he did say buckle up. <laughs> I think he said buckle up. He said, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Because I was buckled should. up. Yeah. And I know it didn't come from nowhere. Yeah, he was like, buckle up. So we buckled up, and when D'Angelo came out, he let us know exactly 
who the friends in D'Angelo versus friends were, and he let us know that we're his friends. They're the best recappers. So, <laughs> I mean, this to me was a uh, this just wasn't entertaining at all. No, this was very bad no. in my opinion. I mean, it's D'Angelo. So yes, we heard some classic songs that we love, of course. But I think they set the bar with the whole Apollo Theater and the name being on the marquee leading up to it. We thought that this was going to be epic, one of the most entertaining verses that we've seen. <clears throat> and this was very underwhelming as far as I'm concerned, in my humble opinion, because, listen, I have i don't have verses to do, so I can't True. just shit on somebody that has verses. But this was not entertaining in comparison to most of the other verses. I cut the shit off. That we've seen. Um it's just <laughs> this the, the versus thing. You have to, it, it. No, honestly, it's it's tricky because this is a professional podcaster right here. No, listen, it's tricky because you have to be somebody. You can have records, but with these acts like that, we don't see or hear from in years. It's dangerous because you just don't know what to expect. So somebody like D'Angelo, legend, absolutely one of the greatest R and B artists, songwriters, big producers, facts. But when they don't show their face or pop out for years it's like it's the the whole nostalgic feel yeah we haven't seen him so it's exciting to see D'Angelo but this is just underwhelming man this wasn't this wasn't entertaining at all I didn't enjoy this it just felt like it was a uh, people were getting calls probably the day of hey can you pull up to the Apollo it felt like that yeah like we didn't know who was showing up because they didn't know who was showing up <laughs> So I just, it just, this wasn't it. And I, I, you know, I don't know how they're going to bounce back from this, but I think the versus thing might be tapering off a little bit. I think it might be on the, on the, on the decline at this point. I think so. I think it was dope during the quarantine when we all inside mm. and it was a small thing, but I think once it turned to, to, into this big production. It takes a little luster out of it. Yeah. I think, well, I'm I think not, that's I'm not about to saying. say one one dud off everything that they've done means it's tapering this off. This wasn't. I the can't only judge dud. someone off the, one um, one bad situation. It defines this wasn't where the they're dud. going or Let's what they've done. This yeah, wasn't I, the only dud. It wasn't versus. the only dud. But I think that uh, there may be some truth to the fact that it's unless they adapt it uh, pretty significantly because people just aren't at well, home in the more, same way. How many more duds do you guys think they have? That, that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> but I just said this wasn't the only dud. Well, I'm asking which ones. I think of, I know another dud, and that's where my dud list stops. Jagged Edge and 112 was a dud. Oh, that's third. That's the third one. Uh, I think this was. See, that's the third dud. Is all right. I got three dubs. I mean, uh, is that the word we're using? Yeah, duds. I got three three duds. What's your third? I'm not saying. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, there it is right. Off there. how how many have where? they done? That's a pretty good percentage. Sean Garrett. That wasn't a nah, dud. That was definitely not a dud. That has yeah, established that the brand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll show you when it comes Wait, up. Wait, I didn't even know that. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't a that didn't count. It wasn't that a versus. wasn't a versus. Keep going. The Manny Fresh versus Scott Short was a bad matchup. Boy Wonder so Hit Boy wasn't a, a versus It wasn't either. a dud. It was still good, though. I won't call Fab and kiss a dud. Oh, no, it was great. That was entertaining. Um, Babyface and Teddy Riley was great both times. I won't say the one. It's not important, but it'll come up and I'll point to the screen. Um. Oh, well, then I'll just say it. Go point. Let's get some edge back to this podcast. That wasn't the one for me. Oh, that doesn't matter. I hated Alicia Keys and John Legend. Oh. Uh, I hated, right. I, I, and I didn't want to say that because of my respect for both of them. Of course. And their families. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're in that. Well, listen, let's be clear. We respect anybody that's called for versus you're a legend. That's, yeah. We don't even have to but debate that, that. That one wasn't for me. But this shit with D'Angelo. Say it. Well, while you're trying to get the words together, we are not defining this amazing platform off three alleged duds. This shit is great. I don't think it's going to taper off just because one bad situation happened. I just think it's going to taper off because I think that the world is going to start to open up in a little bit more and people are probably not going to be at home the way that we were during the height of Versus. Right. And not only that, I don't think that, it, I don't think, who else would you call that, you know what I'm saying? The list is starting it. to get short. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of the people that we love, they're not doing this. Well, yeah. I, I think this can end up being really cool once I think we're close to outside somewhat opening, and I think this could be a cool thing that they could live stream and people could actually go to. This is a cool you you can do the same shit over. You could do I'd go to Swizz and Tim versus at 
an arena. All right, I'm going to wrap it fire my opinions off because I don't want us to spend too much time. This is not a versus cast. Can we call Larry back? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to call Larry right this second. <laughs> I'm going to continue. Wait, what did Larry say? I screenshotted that shit when he said it. I just want to. I just want to say what he said. That was, I just thought that was funny. All right, I'll I'll try to wrap it fire my opinions. The snow leopard off. after his prayer. And, and I'm leading with love too. I'm I'm gonna yeah always I'm, always I'm gonna love. Stop, I'm gonna lean on on Azalea Banks swag right now and just list some things that I. <sighs> all right, it opened with uh scratch opened up, and while I love scratch and all that he does has done and represents in hip hop, boy, bad time for scratch to open up for me. <clears throat> I loved his opening set, but I understand why an R&B lover maybe not so much because he was he was doing some R&B stuff too, but he was it was more of a hip hop DJing set. Uh, I think that's generous. Okay. Uh, a hip hop DJ set is when hip hop records are played. He literally scratched every verse and every hook of every song that came on, which is could be awesome somewhere else for an R&B act to. Uh, be about to grace the stage. I understand it's D'Angelo. I know it's hip hop ties. Mm -hmm. It was a lot for me. I did a lot of muting and unmuting during the opening set. But again, I had guests over watching. It was vibey in my living room. I had the LEDs on. It oh, yeah, wasn't it's time. fucking vibe. It wasn't time for scratchy scratch all these records. Cool. D'Angelo comes out. Oh, before D'Angelo comes out. The whole leaning on the, uh, us filming and taping in the Apollo Theater. I mean, when Patty and Gladys did that at the theater in Philly, the way that they were positioned on the stage, we it was the backdrop. They put the backdrop behind the stage where it normally goes. Yeah. This was reverse, and it was weird for me. The carpet was distracting. It was a lot going on. I feel you. You can barely tell that it's at the Apollo. Yeah, th yeah. that... That didn't do it any justice. If you at the Apollo and you promoting that, then find a different way for that to come across. Mm -hmm. Some people may say I'm nitpicking. Let me move on. D'Angelo comes out and the very first record lost me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Lost me a little bit. I don't think that's the first record if he has an opponent across from him. Definitely not. Uh, it was an untitled new song. Oh, well, that would explain it. Yeah. That that wouldn't happen if there were an opponent no, across from nah. him. Now, not first. Some of the sure. people I spoke to behind the scenes who shall remain anonymous, Larry, did their best. No, this wasn't Larry. I spoke <laughs> to a bunch of other people that Swiss. did their best to say to me that Maxwell may have been afraid of D'Angelo. And for a minute, I leaned into See, that. I don't like that. I don't like that. But that's let me just finish my point before I forget. I understand the competitive nature of our business. And I know that fear is the first assumption we run to when there is a cancellation. Mm. I totally get that. After watching, no one can convince me that Maxwell was afraid to face D'Angelo once he saw D'Angelo's list. I just would have a hard time believing that personally. I don't knock anybody else's thoughts on it. I, no, but I can't I, see him being. Afraid. I have a hard time Maxwell, rolling with that one. Maxwell has. Jams. I'm definitely not rolling with that. Maxwell is not afraid of any of these Harvey acts that are out here, except for one who we will not name because of their past and their history. We don't talk about him. And anymore. if this He's was canceled. the list, but, well, everybody's scared of him. That don't count. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. to me, that yeah, would be the knows. only yeah. person that Maxwell wouldn't want to. But after, list sure. after looking at the, the list, and granted, I don't know if this list was the same list. I don't think this would have been his 20 had he been I don't think so either. Nah. I don't think love, so either. Love, Med and Ref, I don't, even, I don't think Left and Right is coming in his 20. Med, Med and Ref came out, and I wanted to hear Rockwell. I mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. But, I mean, that would have been nice if it's D'Angelo and Friends. Uh, Rory made the point earlier, why would they do that song? For me, because when you put the end friends there, it opens things up for you to be able to play with yeah. some different things. Uh, Y'all know how I feel about her, so no need for me to talk about Amazing. that. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I thought she did great. But this, like Rory, I'm not going to cancel verses because of three duds, nor do I think that they only ascended because of the state of the country and, and the pandemic. I don't believe that. Do I think that projections may lower if everybody's outside and the country opens back up? Certainly. But I'm never going to doubt the power of hip hop to centralize millions of people in one place without all of these marketing and promotion dollars. 
Well, no, but, it's, but like Rory said, it's only only because this was birthed because we couldn't see these people live. People couldn't perform live. So it was birthed from that. And as things start opening up and we're able to now get back in these venues and see our favorite acts again, naturally this will fade out. Like, no, I wouldn't I'm not going to sit at home on my phone when I can go catch the same But artist. that's not, but that's not, that's not the inevitable evolution of when you say naturally. Like, I was birthed because my mom made my dad a cake one night. But that what has to happen after that don't necessarily have to be what you're saying. Like, yeah, that's no, they how can they start, Maybe born. they can start doing these live. And people, but listen, I, to I your think, point, I, I don't want to repeat it. It's I don't want to go. You can back. hear things twice. Yeah, I don't want to go back and forth with you, Maul, because I, I, I do have a similar take, but for different reasons, and I don't indict verses in mine. Okay. When, when, when you get with corporate, yeah. and I've taken y'all down this path enough, so I'll spare you. But I'm putting a lot of this on mm-hmm. corporate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from my own eyes. Not mm-hmm. asking anybody else to agree I'm or you. assume the same way. I have seen things in social media that lead me to believe for months now that there might be something going on behind the curtain. I'm not mad at that. Well, well I, I, can, I can certainly see uh, Swizz and Tim getting a hold of D'Angelo and D'Angelo saying, yo, I'm down. They get Maxwell. Maxwell backs out for whatever reason. We don't know. And Apple going, so? But we've we, seen, we have we have D'Angelo. I don't care about your structure here. Mm. I know the amount of views it gets and how much money we make every time you guys do anything with verses. And you have D'Angelo. Have him go out there and sing and nah, just. Gra- I can't nah, because I, mean, I can see Apple doing that. What? No, 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 they no, no, just no. pushed Hell back no. the um, Ashanti and um, yeah, Keisha yeah, battle no. a million times. Not so. the same. Not even remotely it's close the to the same. same. No, because they both they had two parties already in agreement to do it. No, right. and it was a it was a there were health COVID, issues. Yeah. Which, it's a difference. Which is insurance, but I don't think Apple is doing that. And getting and getting a hold of yeah. Ashanti and Keisha Cole is way easier than getting a hold of D'Angelo and getting him to agree to do anything. If Ashanti come in there with with COVID, if they didn't do their due diligence and anybody gets sick. Then that we no, it's not the same at all. No, no, it's not the same. But I don't think Apple was telling somebody. I don't care if you don't have anybody to bat- battle D'Angelo. That make sounds it like exactly what. No, uh, yeah, I think I don't, say I, it to me. I don't know if I don't, Apple, I don't know if they'd word it that way, but they would say, "Hey, we know how much money we make. You have D'Angelo agreements. Who knows if he'll agree to this in two months when we finally get Maxwell to agree or another opponent? I believe. Yeah, Apple, you have D'Angelo. We have the Apollo booked already. Y'all are going out there. No, I believe Apple to care more about their brand. Than they, and how they look than anything. Like they're not going to just roll out some bullshit. Think- I don't, and I also don't think Apple thought this was going to be bad. <laughs> like, I don't think they were like, oh, it's going to be shitty, but we'll be fine. No, I think they were banking on... I think on, everyone was confident in this. I think they were banking on people just showing up to have a mutual love and respect and a certain type of relationship with D'Angelo. I think they were yeah. banking on people showing up and just doing a record or two. I think that's what they were leaning on. And as it got closer to the day, people started saying, oh, you know, I'm pulling out. I can't do it. I can't show up. I'm out, I'm out here. I can't fly in in New York. Whatever. Like, I think that's what happened. I ultimately. see Apple execs going, you have D'Angelo, the Apollo, and the Versus community that comes out every single time you guys go live. Go do it. I don't even want us to spend too much time on this because it wasn't the biggest of cultural moments. Like, But it could have been. It could have, because we haven't seen D'Angelo in it years. It could have been if it were a proper Versus. Right, that's all I'm saying. Oh, I totally agree with that's you. That's all I'm saying. We haven't seen D'Angelo in years. He's one of our favorite artists. A classic Facts. record. So we were looking forward to this. You know what I mean? Like we were. Yo, I hate to get into my uh my convo that we was talking about off air, man. But even as D'Angelo was up there with the funny hat on, with the the buffalo looking coat, he was dressed like the, you with the shingles, <laughs> uh, with the funny Chelsea boots mm-hmm. or whatever's going on up there, right? Yeah. And some people on the internet were clowning him. But that's D'Angelo. Yeah. I don't know why they clown. Yeah. That's that's him. Men out there, D'Angelo pause was a tough out. He was, <laughs> he was tough to deal with. At some point, they showed the, the how does it feel video and shit on, on the Apple screen. And all I could think was, man, I remember that era. Shit, I see. Yeah. Women I remember that era. This, like, uh, excited she about D'Angelo. She got to chill out, right? Yeah. Got to chill out. How do you react when that happens? That happens a lot. Why do women do that? Like right next to their significant other. Like why do they do that? It's like they don't even care. They, they don't wanna, even they think about wanna, us enough. They just want to test to see exactly how jealous they like. Women like to see their man get a little jealous. I think women like that. I got man crushes though, so I'd be excuse me. <laughs> I'd be fanning out with her. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, he does look great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let a Zac Efron movie come on. <laughs> think he'll, do you, babe, do you think he'll take his shirt off again? <laughs> Yo, Rory, cut it out, man. Don't act like you've never uh, bonded with your girl over a dude. I've never bonded with a woman. Oh, oh, man. All right. Bonded you're with cool, a woman. You you're cool. My bad. You're cool. You're cool. Over bad. a man? You What's wrong with y'all, crushes? What's wrong? No, I don't have a man crush. Next part, we're going to change the seat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but. You don't see how that, like, the opinions, oh, like, they weigh in the room. It's like the Titanic. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. I like and it. also, I'm shocked that you, Joe, sitting here, like, you have not bonded with a woman over a dude that y'all both like that was an entertainer. We've never liked the same dude. That's why I was, oh, you have different tastes. That's why girl. I was relating to what Parks is uh, saying because, like, I've watched the movie uh, with a young lady and she went wild over Vin Diesel. And I'm like, <laughs> when I went to see I Am Legend and Will Smith worked out for a little bit, whoever that was that was with me, they went a little too wild. <laughs> I wasn't into it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. Like, relax uh, yourself. Yeah, like those be the guys. I told y'all I dated somebody who was real big on Dwayne Wade back in the day. Like, mm-hmm. it beat some of those. I've never said, oh, he was. So oh, Will, the Rock is my is Will my Smith guy. is not your type. Okay, fair enough. All right. I've said that years ago on this pod. Yeah, but yeah. you're trying to make me be gay with you. No, and I'm not. Cause Zac Efron, my nigga. Anyway, I just, <laughs> no, 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 he no, played the serial killer. Son, Who was the serial killer? Ted Bundy. Who was the attractive serial killer? Ted yeah, Bundy. Yeah, Ted Bundy. Yeah, he played Ted Bundy, man. How is that not your MCM? <laughs> what? Man, that's just man. I can't tell him who the man crush you, should be. You got be. another high chair? <laughs> I do. A high I'm, chair. I'm going to tell him who his man crush should be. I'm going to sit behind you. This is, you. <laughs> <laughs> this is, who he, this is man crush. We, what you want me to do? I'll be cool if I just find out how y'all will start your verse. I don't even need the bars no more on this part. I'm done forcing people to do things they don't want to do. But if y'all tell me how it starts, I'll, I'll, I'll write it on my own. You just need to, you need the first four ball, four, four words. All I right. rap on this podcast, so you know what time. All right, is check check this out, man. Your man is back at it. Who's that? Your man is back at it. My man, our man, friend of the show, Sahai, our guy, Sahai, our guy. He said, I was glad to see Sahai was at, feeling better though, because I, I had brought him up a couple episodes ago. I was like, you know, the yeah, whole the, incident, the was, accident thing. Yeah. yeah, so it was good to see him. In better spirits, mm-hmm. a little bandaged up, but you know, mm-hmm. he's good. Glad he's active. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he had a uh, he had some interesting dialogue on uh, no jumper with Adam Twenty Two. <laughs> Choice words, if you will. Adam Twenty Two, Parks and Rory let him in the culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was us. <laughs> Come yeah, on, buddy, it's great over here. <laughs> They're friendly. <laughs> They're friendly. <laughs> But yeah, some choice of words. Some choice words. Words of choice. Mm. I get right to it, man. Chosen words. That's right. Who you calling? That's right. I was calling to get right to the bottom of it. The culture's calling them, too. I was calling right to get to the bottom of it. Call Saha. I don't have size now. You got it? I can get it. Yo. This is Joe Budden from the Joe Budden Podcast. May I speak to Adam22, please? Hello, Joe Budden. How are you doing? I am well. I am well. How are you? Excellent. Just about to do an interview Aaron Carter. It's probably similar to what you're on. No, <laughs> it's, I would never interview Aaron Carter. No, it was Aaron Carter right, interviews well, are fucking hysterical. I'm going to put a pin in that. Really? Yes. See, these, these white boys were late. <laughs> Adam, I, we were about yes. to do a segment on, on you interviewing Sahai. So mm-hmm. I wanted to call you to figure out why, why, why you think Sahai said all that to you about me. Do you think he went in? Because he just said real quick that he would. No, Adam, you, or you can't, you can't d- d- divide black kings. No, I don't think he went in. I thought he was fine. But I'm asking you because you was there. Like, like yeah, I mean, well, you, think, you think I'm the one to just call out fresh out there? I mean. What you think? I mean, you're a non-participant at this point, right? So it, it can't be that scary. So then why do you media people ask active rappers about 
retired rappers. Because I saw this question, you got to, hey, do you think Joe's a worthy? Uh, well, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I just wanted to get some follow up thoughts on him. I noticed that, you know, you guys had that little back and forth, and then yeah. he's, uh, you, you guys have speak it, spoken about him very flatteringly since then. He's a good guy. So I was just trying to figure out where the energy was at. It's also weird that you guys had that conversation like pre versus. Also, Aaron Carter is is right here, and I feel like he's probably gonna interrupt this conversation. But just oh, so I'm, you know. I'm yeah, you, listen, fine. you have fun. <laughs> <laughs> You go ahead. I just lost half my audience with that <laughs> announcement, even. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your day, man. Have a good interview, man. Hey, much love, Joe. Thanks. All right. So I have this clip here. Let's see. Let's see. It, here we go. But even just the idea of you and Joe Budden <laughs> I would, having I that I would conflict. demolish Joe Budden, though. Just to be honest, like, Joe Budden, I, I don't want to do no beats battle with Joe Budden. Look, I need to look you in the face mm. on smack stage, something like that. Oh. Tell him to sit up. I saw I had a half a ticket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got a half a ticket. But do you consider him an elite <laughs> level yeah, MC? Absolutely. I was yeah. a, See, that's like, why I, I like know how to destroy Adam. him. Do you consider him an elite? I, already, I studied Joe Budden. I already know. He don't know me, though. Mm. He Maul, don't know how Maul, deep you this. Gave, you gave him the pamphlet. And then when me. I get into my feelings, <laughs> like when I get into my... <laughs> <laughs> Handed over the notes? Yeah, I think Maul yeah, gave him the, the, the Joe pamphlet. No, he he had been a walked off the stage before. I didn't even know he was off the stage. Like, oh, damn, bro. I was still going. I'm I'm a Yeah. But it might be out of practice too. It's been a few years. Mm. Hey, yeah. hey, and that, that ain't just for Joe Budden. That's for any artist. That's for any artist. Uh, let him know. <laughs> I just get right to that. Listen, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just different when he's on, though. It's just day. Hey, hey, this is like 15 years old. <laughs> More is different. No, I get it. It's different. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, listen. He's in shape, though. You still in shape? That's what I'm saying. No. Yeah, so no. So that's what he's saying. Like, No, I'm not in shape. But they wouldn't play like that with him. With him. I, I don't Fuck me. So. Uh-oh. They, they didn't. Uh-oh. Oh, no, my God. Oh, my. I was praying I didn't need mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Hit a gun. <laughs> you got down on your knees and prayed? I was praying I didn't need mine. Listen, man. Oh, come on. Listen, this is what I'm saying. And I'm so glad that this, this occurred. Because I don't even get my mojo until a rapper says my name, right? Mm -hmm. But I can't do nothing with this, man. What I'm going to do with this, I uh, I'm retired. Get back in shape. Pin rusty now. Come on, give me a Rocky Four moment. Walked off the the, <laughs> the battle stage with Hollow. I'm in no position. If to, you guys don't to stop booing, <laughs> yo, get this. Is, I'm sorry. Say what you said about Saha off no. mic when it came to this topic. What did I say? Say it again. Don't worry about it. Tell me what I said. I forgot what <laughs> I, I said. Get what I say? Oh, we're gonna talk remember. about it in a minute. Yeah, tell me. Well, uh, the post he made. Oh, you yeah, know, I just thought it was. No, it was, we get to it. We get to it. Not okay. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So I'm in no predicament to do this, and I'm not gonna bore podcast listeners or try to rehype old Joe Budden fans like music is coming. We're not doing this. That's, yeah, it's, that's it's, not, just, it's just interesting when you hear it come up and it just give hey, I get goosebumps and, when I well, hear it. Because you're from the culture. That's, I get, that's what the culture is based on is battling. So. I get goosebumps because I'm not used to Ooh, it. Is that what yeah. this was? I'm this is you are you saying uh, was that was this your reply to Simon? Pull that up fast. Rory didn't have an opinion until now. All right. What no, was I, I, I was going to I was going to ask you before he pulled that up. Do you think Sai High said that because he knows you're retired? You think he'd have extra sauce, a little toot on on his voice? I don't think Sai would say a word to me if I was active. Honestly, I think he would. I he, think he would. He wouldn't. Because rappers have, and rappers that don't rap as good as Sai High have, like come at you when you were in but your we, prime. We've had that talk though before. It ain't just about that. No, it's not. It's not. But I, I but I think Sai High is from the same cloth you from. I don't think he'll he'll run from anybody when it comes to. Just pinning and, and I think, going yeah. in the booth. I think Saha does. Saha would I, rap think, I, th I think he's one of the sickest, man. You're not never going to hear me say a bad word about uh, Sai's pin, but that that's what makes it exciting for me. Yeah. What I will promise you, though, Sai, if the day ever comes where I decide to get the dust off the old pin, you got a 97 and a half coming your way. Ooh, talk that <laughs> What's on shit? the half, that, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say. He got, he got something coming to him. 97 and If a that half. ever happens, 2026. Ooh. <laughs> gonna dig you up somewhere. Where he at? <laughs> but uh, all jokes aside, we glad to Sai as well. For sure. Yeah. 
For sure. His first interview back, he right at my neck. It's up again. <laughs> <laughs> I would get up again. Well, it, to be fair, he was asked. He, he was asked. You up. He, your name was brought up to him, and he just responded. Yeah, but he responded like it was right back up. But I think I think the I think dope lyricists and dope MCs only like do that. that He's when, from that cloth. Yeah, when dope MCs are mentioned. And then it's like okay. Y'all say he's from that cloth. Shut up. He is. I think he is. Pen, pen wise. Y'all still ain't can't tell me how y'all verse start. Shut up. I don't, I don't want We're to not from that cloth. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> so then how could how would you know that cloth? Oh, I know when I enough cloth for all of us to be cut from it. Yeah, that's, that's very that. true. You were fifteen when that was there. You were older. <laughs> You understood that one. You was like, Ooh, what, I was cloth like tw- he, what cloth does he mean? I was like 27 I when know. you said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Sai. Glad he's well. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, shit. Yeah, come on, Morgan. Get your shit off. Yeah, so in the interview, he had mentioned in that. The, uh, yeah, and so in the interview. Say it as wait, it pertains on. to my greatness. How, how you feel about Ian following Sai being the first like? Mm. Mm. Ops. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I thought you was going to hit Adam with the, I don't care what Sai said, why he said it. And why felt is he so comfortable saying it to you? <laughs> Yo, that right. meme, that meme traveled around the globe 17 times. Sai says, I'm sitting on one of the greatest albums ever recorded in rap music history, and I'm looking for a label to partner with to help me put it out the proper way. Let me know if you are interested, please. He didn't put a please there, but it sounds like begging for mercy. <laughs> That is a sick post. <laughs> Read the caption. The caption, oh, the caption ties it together. Since my journey started in music, I've always considered I've always been considered one of the best rappers in the world. But a lot of times where I'm from, Atlanta, Georgia, or who I've been signed to in the past, hinders me from getting opportunity I deserve. Oh, he's snitching. I'm done. Wait, with hold on, hold on. <laughs> he <laughs> he he turns no, 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 no. Stop, stop. <laughs> he stop. Turns <laughs> state. stop for a second. Let's let's break down this first sentence. A lot of the times where I'm from, Atlanta, Georgia. One of the most thriving hip hop communities in the world, <laughs> the, the Black Hollywood, I believe, is what they call it, where everyone's moving or, to, <laughs> or where I've been signed. Some of the biggest black the companies bi- there, the Con- biggest label well, in the world, Tyler Perry, Kanye, there. The dope. Kanye everybody, West, everybody there. Def Jam, and Universal. T Pain has out hindered there now. me from getting the opportunities that I deserve. Coming to America was there. everything is there. <laughs> uh, Eddie and Arsenio was there. <laughs> you should be there too, buddy. Sorry. Then following, I don't complain or throw my partners under the bus, even though I just complained and, and threw my partners, partners under, under the bus. bus. Uh, I just try to work through it. But now that I am a free agent, that's in quotations. So I don't know if that means he's actually a free agent or just wants to be a free agent. I feel like I'm at a crossroads. Uh, do I still even want to do this due to the lack of support I get from the people around me? Since my recent incident, I have had time to reflect, oh, contemplate of retiring from oh, rap. Brother. That's that's your line though. Oh brother, and no, just I don't contemplate. A, and I just, just do it. And I just did being, it. No, you contemplated did rage. You was gonna retire before. Uh, and just being a songwriter, but the overwhelming support from the fans makes me feel the people would still like to hear my music. So I'm writing this letter to the music industry. If you're interested in one of the best hip hop rap musicians in the world, please feel free to reach out to me via so now, DM. Yo, a label lo- hitting you. Wait, via scroll DM down to the FY. You want? Read it. Read it. FYI, I have three albums ready to go with features from Travis Scott, Kanye West, Big Sean, Two Chains, Lizzo, Pink Sweats, Mozzie, Jack Hollow, Ty Dolla, Corday, and more. That is a real pitch. This feels like an email blast hey. that the label sends out. <laughs> Loud about the features, quiet about the clearances. <laughs> <laughs> It's only it's only crazy to me because on, in the interview with Adam Twenty Two, he was pulled up how he had one of the best and the biggest. You know, people in his corner with Kanye. Oh, see, and that's why I need to battle Sai because he think I wouldn't have nothing to say about him. And now you got something to say about. No, him. I've been had things to say okay, about. I have more. a book full of. Everybody has a page in it. <laughs> <laughs> things to say about this person. Yeah. If they had the conversation. That's your burn book. You just, just go happens. through the roller. It's like, what yeah. do I have to say about Sai? So, oh, it's like your. Uh, that's so, I, that's so it's ironic. Like your love, it's like your love page. It's yeah. so ironic that Pump It Up was in Mean Girls yeah. and they had the, the book. Exactly. Fire, Ooh, my second mind. smash. <laughs> 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 what, what was the first smash? That wasn't the first? No. Oh, okay. Pump it up. You ever heard that one? That was the second smash? Enough of you guys. Okay. <laughs> let me interpret. Let me in- listen. Yeah, speak from an artist. Standpoint. Listen, you guys. How do you how new do you listeners, old listeners, women and men, everyone. Let me do my best to use my hip hop expertise that I've been educated on for the last 
20 years per se to break this down for you guys. Sometimes hip hop slang can be difficult to understand. Yes, it can be. And this is all logic hip-hop based. Slang. This is all logic based, what I'm saying to y'all. Yeah. Sometimes if you just step out of your own shell yes. and put yourself in someone else's shoes, yes. you understand how things manifest. Case in point, ever been having a little tension a little back and forth with your significant other Mm. but it was when like company was over your man was there Mm. the fight was escalating but your man didn't know like your man just was still glued to the screen at some point you said to yourself damn man we really gotta have this talk me and my girl whenever my man leaves maybe you even went to your man and was like yo man shit turned up over here Mm -hmm. like do me come back tomorrow man let me just handle the situation (laughs) real quick right very normal shit imagine Kanye just read 70 texts from Ken. It's not going the greatest. Mm -hmm. Nigga walk out into the Wyoming yard. Nigga sigh all in the pool. Yeah, in the pool. (laughs) Nigga sigh, Robin, check this beat out. Yeah. Hey, hey, where's your bag? Hey, you said it was in the guest house? You, you should get it. Hey, th- it's not it. I'm working on it. I got a joy for you. It ain't no more album, Sai Hai. Sai Hai. Kim, Kim is about to get your publishing in the divorce. Yeah, get out of here like, while yo, you still can. Go, go save yourself. <laughs> get you a situation, bro. This one is over. All I'm saying is, I understand. Yo, Sai Hai, go to Empire, man. Go make some real money. Go to Empire. Have a blast. Man, come sign to me. <laughs> That's crazy. I'll put your shit out. <laughs> Y'all are fucking crazy. <laughs> I'll put your shit out all over the boulevard. <laughs> the boulevard. <laughs> you press up CDs? Yo, uh, I'm joking because it's so much fun to joke, but Ty, I love you. It's all jokes, please. It's always love and we you, always, And we need a new album from True. Email it to me. Yeah, just to listen. Yeah, send it over. I love those features. It was a good list. <laughs> Shut up. It was. <laughs> Which one? His FYI list. Look, you ain't got a word to say since Uzi put his, his song out saying everybody's stealing his sauce. He said it. That's the chorus. I know you niggas in my studio trying to steal my thoughts. All you niggas lost. I want the divorce. That was the hook. I said, I hope Maul is hearing this. I just said this. Nobody's stealing sauce. Uzi movie. made a video and said that. Nobody's stealing sauce. All right, all right, with my phone. <laughs> I've just been in Detroit favoring things. <laughs> hey, because you know we old, so we like out of touch now when the new, new shit drops. You don't even know why I'm W. Melly coming home. Like... <laughs> Didn't he? <laughs> Did he no, win? No, you don't Did even he... know. <laughs> Did he win that appeal? No, you don't even know he on his way home. <laughs> I thought he confessed. Uh, that's funny to just drop on a nigga. You don't even know Melly on his way home, nigga. Oh, man. I thought he confessed. There with my Uzi clip. Oh, how did I miss the Uzi clip? I can't find it there. I'm going to find that song. Look, the Need No Boys don't even know the song. Y'all don't even open a new Uzi. Yeah, I know. Who's ain't got no song, man? <laughs> Travis not out. Got, Travis ain't got no song. I know that. He working. He working. Oh no, he did the uh, the, the bossy remix. I'm bossy. I'm the yeah, one that's, that's been that on was, the track. That was, I'm the one wrong. that's that was given the wrong. it back. Not that that's that right. Was, I'm no, Travis no. Scott on the track. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's Travis wrong. Scott that's on the track. That's, I ain't announced. Uh, rappers <laughs> announce who they are on the track. <laughs> we know. That's why we listen to nigga. Yeah, I'm so sorry, man. These niggas gonna jump me one day, man. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> That's why I don't leave my house. <laughs> Can't jump me in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy. Um, all right. Good luck to Sahai. What else we got? What else we doing? What else is happening? What else is important oh, out talk, there? We didn't talk about the uh Ghostface and Raekwon uh versus this. Oh, talk about it. Who do you think will win? Ghostface is gonna win that ba- that battle. I think they'll win together. <laughs> They have good. albums together. I don't like Several. it. I don't like it. After the yeah. D'Angelo thing, I think this is just going to be a great concert of them rapping the songs they do together plus solo stuff. I don't really see this being a versus. Yeah, it's Especially not a after not a the versus. D'Angelo thing. It's not uh, a versus. Shout out to Ghost and Ray. It'll be a bunch it's of great two music. two of our favorite MCs. Yeah. I, w- I would have preferred to Showcasing see... Showcasing their talents. would have preferred to see Ghost and Ray versus another duo that's heavily collaborated or whatever you want to put it. Yeah. That would be great. 
Like who? Mob I Deep. don't know. Mob Deep, maybe. Well, obviously, P's not here, One. but. Oh, Mob Deep. Well, I, I meant but you could two still, solo. I know they're in a group, but. You can still do it. Yeah. yeah. You're playing the records. That's like when Jack, when 112, when, when 112 played the records. Half of 112. Different reasons, of course. Rest in peace, Prodigy. Yeah. But we don't want to see yeah. Havoc versus two people. Fair. And then, like you said, uh, if you do Kiss and Styles, Chic she, Odd Man out. Yeah. Not fair. If you say, hey, they left their group members. Yeah, there's 20 of them. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's just one of, so. Um, clips, no. Yeah. Well, Malice wouldn't do it. Or, pardon, yeah. no Malice wouldn't do it. They shouldn't do it. Yeah. I, yeah, agree. I, don't, I guess it's hard it. to find they a duo. Do they shouldn't I'm not, do that. I'm not feeling this one, though. Oh. I mean, I, I, I'm going to watch it because I love them as artists. Absolutely. But as a versus, the versus is just changing. It's evolving, clearly. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a concert series. Which is what I think was the plan somewhat. I mean, I don't want to see a rapper. I don't want to see rappers concert concert series. I don't. And I know I'm trying to do my, you my you new, don't see my rappers new love versus? thing. I don't, I don't want to see rappers performing through Zoom. Oh, okay. That's valid. No, I'm, I'm with you. Now, totally now, In person, now. I would love to see it. But I, singing on camera for some reason is just better. Listen, we, today, today they rapper. have too much cool shit for a new act to do. Like, uh. I love that series. Uh, what is it? Colors, color studios. Colors, yeah. Where it's just mm-hmm. a bright background and a mic hanging. One of, one of my, mm-hmm. my and favorite we could really get series into the, ever. Yo, just cut me off, man. What was it? I'm telling you what the name of it. You asked what what's the name of it. I said colors. It's one of my favorite uh, platforms. Oh, I was right. Half the time. Right up. Yeah, you asked a question, I answered it. I wasn't cutting you off. <laughs> that's what happens when you ask a question. No, oh, you knew the answer. Yeah, so that's answer. not a cutoff. Okay, man. Um, <laughs> look. Look at this guy. Gunner Lust looks like the greatest rapper ever in this empty room. Is, that, look, Everybody looks simple, like the greatest simple, ever in this not, room. Oh, not too much production. But you're paying attention to the artists, what they saying. Right. Like the, the attention is in the right spot. I even love the one wire that you could see. I just love this. Yeah. Uh, like y'all always say, Tiny Desk. There's a bunch of spots that, that do it right and, Trap Symphony. Shout out to and make it cool. Trap Symphony. Yes. Shout out to, shout out to Erickson. You know what I'm saying? No, Trap Symphony is really good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, with the with the online shit, you do kind of have to focus more on the words and the performance rather than trying to just do a, a crazy production that, that, that works work. live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, e, e killing the angles. <laughs> <laughs> and all of y'all ain't gonna sound good uh, when the saxophone is just playing. Mm. Like I know yeah. that's the trend. I know. Get the live horns. Get Not the ill true. drummer. Yeah. It don't work for everybody. Yeah. Is all. And yep. I don't want to see it from everybody, but I don't really understand why Erickson would light Roddy Rich so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Roddy Rich does is the coolest thing in the world. It is. <laughs> it's amazing talent. Like did did y'all hear uh did y'all hear how the fans got the update on some new heat that might be coming from him? Mm mm. His baby moms. <laughs> His baby mom's tweeted. I spoke to y'all little boyfriend today. <laughs> <laughs> what a rollout! <laughs> I spoke to y'all little boyfriend. She said I spoke to y'all little boyfriend today, and he got a bunch of blah, blah, She just said whatever she said about the music he got coming. Where it was he got heat on the way? Just be patient. Blah blah blah. blah. But <clears throat> what a fly way to announce music. That is fly. How your baby mom's announce it? Yeah. She yeah, knows. Yeah, but to do it salty, but know that. Nah, he cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate See, him, but I, I can't deny the music. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> when baby mamas balance the salt. Like, yeah, I'm not, that ain't my favorite guy in the world, but he's, he's my family. Yeah. <laughs> when, he, when he wins, I win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I still support that. Right. We ain't got to be fucking necessarily, but it's mm-hmm. a win still. This kid is cool, man. Kid is cool. I don't know why Rory didn't put me on sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is worse uh, when no, I was, put on. No, you was denying the, the the Roddy shit when I was playing it around you. Really? Years ago. Really? Per usual, it's fine though. What a jacket! <laughs> that is wow, great. that is a wow. Uh, all right, only well, certain people could pull the. That's like, not the a bedazzle. jacket. That's a weapon. <laughs> only certain people could pull off the bedazzle jackets, though. It's true. You gotta have yeah. a, me of which single. is not one of them. Yeah, I've, I've tried. Let me throw on this stick bedazzle shit in the store. Maybe I could pull it stick off. Stick to the earth tones. No, yeah. I can't. Uh, let's see what else is important. Uh, do we have we have to talk about uh? 
I don't want to talk about it with Maul here. But I, I wrote Cuomo down. Why you want to talk about it while I'm here? I told. I'm I don't want to talk about that stuff with you. That's oh, all right. I'm, I'm, bro. I had fun with the whole Trump shit. I'm, I'm not the p- political guy. All of these dudes are nasty. All of them are just money hungry. <laughs> That's true. Evil people. Like I don't care about politics. Pull out the statement. Let me at least read the statement that uh, uh, MC Quomes put out. (laughs) MC Cuomo was getting zesty in the political offices, and Cuomo has responded. And this is after uh, a third accuser has come forward and said that he's been a little handsy and just sexually aggressive. Uh, Cuomo says, "I have teased people about their personal lives, their relationships." about getting married or not getting married. I mean no offense and only attempt to add some levity and banter to what is a very serious business. Uh, I now understand that my interactions may have been insensitive or too personal and that some of my comments given my position made others feel in ways I never intended. I acknowledge some of the things I have said uh, I have said have been misinterpreted as an unwanted flirtation, he continued. To the extent anyone felt that way, I am truly sorry. And that is the statement. Mm-hmm. And what was he, it doesn't look good. What was he exactly accused of? Uh, trying to kiss a girl, saying stuff to another girl to the effect of, do you like dating older men or sleeping with older men or something to that effect? Okay. And I'm not sure what the third one was. Oh, maybe this one, can I kiss you? At a wedding. <laughs> well, that is where you feel a little kissy. <laughs> Yeah, the drinks are flowing. You got your good, good yeah, suit. That's on, also good why they allow you to have a plus one most of the time. Yeah, like you can kiss your plus one. Like he came in with a woman. Like that's a wild place to get at my date. Yeah. Yeah. It is a little crazy. <laughs> at the wedding? I mean, shit. Broadway Joe did it on the the Jets sideline. <laughs> Fuck, I say, hey, what do you think about the Jets defense this year? <laughs> I want to kiss you. <laughs> yeah, he he sounds like he's one of the, one of the the many in a uh, men in, in position of power that are a little handsy and a little, you know. Inappropriate. Why is that a thing? Hmm? Huh? Do you think that power causes them to act that way, or do you think that the way that they act causes them to end up in positions of power? I think power and money makes no, you power. more of what you already are. Yeah, you can hide okay. behind. He can hide behind that power. Sure. That like you can do things that you know a guy that didn't have that position of power couldn't do, and then you know you hide behind it because you're the governor, and we got people that can step on these allegations and these stories and then go away. People are not going to believe you because they view me in the public as this great guy, you know, this heroic mm. guy who saved New York during the pandemic, which I don't know how people think that. But anyway, you know, you hide behind them, those type of things. And that's what this just sounds like. He's a little handsy, a little inappropriate at times. And women are just being vocal about it as they should. Yeah. Yeah, they have the right to express that. And that's what it sounds like to me. But we'll see. Um, it's looking like they're going to investigate it and. This is not going to go away. Yeah, no, a case, nah. is, a case is open. Yeah, yeah. this is not. This case is, is open. This is definitely not going to go away. So, All right, we will, we will keep you posted on what's happening. Um, Let's stay stay in politics. Green Man, can you bring up uh, what the Texas governor just, just tweeted? <coughs> oh, Jesus. The, the, uh, the governor of Texas just tweeted. Oh, By yeah. the way, like it's an album rollout. Get ready. Big announcement in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's start there. Uh, I just announced that Texas is open in all caps, 100%. Space, space, space. Everything in all caps, space, space. I also ended the statewide mask mandate. I thought that was already happening in Texas. I mean, I'm not going to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just interesting to you how everything just started opening up after Trump left office. But I don't. All right, let's have let, let's. Answer that question in one second, right? I was explaining to somebody. All right, Texas, Texas, <laughs> Florida, and Georgia have never closed. Have been open. Mm-hmm. Why are black people confused that Texas, Georgia, and Florida are encouraging people to go out? I just never understood where the confusion was with that. Like, mm-hmm. even as people were partying in Houston and Atlanta, I'm like, cool, but please be careful. Shit, the Atlanta uh, mayor and the governor been fighting publicly. Like, they let you know they don't do the greatest job in, in hiding it. 
Uh, I'm not going to, I'm probably won't be in Houston for a little bit. I heard something disturbing about one of the hotels I really liked out there. I heard they was a little racist and I don't find that difficult to believe either. Mm. So I don't know. I was in Florida this weekend. If only four seasons would update things. (laughs) They just will not update. I was in Florida this weekend and I had a mask on and they were giving me side eye and weird looks like, can you please take your mask off? Really? You're making us uncomfortable. (laughs) That would not, I swear to God, the way up here, like when someone doesn't have their mask on, you get that weird fucking stank look. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Just getting that the entire time. But even when I had it like on my chin. Listen, man, 10 years from now, we're going to look back at 2020 and some of us are going to be very surprised at the things that we learn. But what do you think we'll be surprised that we learn? You just got to wait. Wait and see. Uh, to stay on some of the sexual abuse allegations that are lingering out there, uh, another woman has come forward and she's represented by Lisa Bloom and this whole T.I. and Tiny stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah. I've been trying not to speak on it because uh, they're building a the case. They're getting witnesses. They're doing whatever they could do. Uh, in the interim, announcements have been made regarding mm-hmm. uh, some employment uh, for T.I. I think VH1 announced that that show probably going to hold off on that yeah uh i saw something today that said uh ti will not be returning to ant-man and though this is a really serious topic my i'd be lying to you if i didn't say my first thought was oh shit ti was in ant-man i had no idea he was in ant-man yeah but that's a big deal if you get canceled from like some mcu shit yeah for sure and his vh1 shit was kind of big look at me the pocket watcher um uh, <laughs> no that reality show was huge yeah, this uh, we'll see how this plays out. See, yeah, see how I hope, this plays I, out again, man. This, you just never know what people got going on behind closed doors and in mm-hmm. their bedrooms. You know what I mean? It's just it's disappointing sometimes when you hear these allegations. But I, I don't, don't want to spend see. too much time on this topic. Uh, but did you guys see Chris D'Elia? Are you guys familiar? Comedian? Absolutely. Very, very big. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, I saw you put out a thing. I didn't watch it, though. <clears throat> he, was, he was accused of uh, some, some nasty DMs with some underage women when he was on tour uh, and kind of disappeared for maybe six, seven months. Uh, not sure the exact time frame, but it, it had been a while mm. uh, and finally posted on his YouTube uh, actual statement outside of the PR statement that was you know on his Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I thought it was a... a Interesting way to handle these type of allegations. I thought he handled it pretty well. Stood stood on his stood on the stand of saying, "Hey, everything I've ever done has been consensual, and every woman has been of age." If that was the case, I had zero clue that those women were underage. Got into his sex addiction, sex addiction. Got into the help that he was getting. Got into his relationship with his girl through the whole thing. I thought it was a, a interesting way to fully address these type of allegations. Head on, yeah. I guess yeah. I can respect him for that, but I mean, he still might be a nasty man. He may be. He may be. And and I'm I'm not the person that would decide that because, again, I don't know even that much about it. I just saw the <laughs> screenshots. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was an interesting way, if you do watch his response, to handle this type of <clears throat> era that we're in where sometimes accusations may be true, maybe not be true, uh, and where the timeline dictates if they're true or not and dictates your career from them. In the doc that I watched uh, about Duke that was starring us, uh, when they got to that part, when it was like, uh, yeah, some shit happened, and so under, <clears throat> under, underage girl, he said he just didn't know how old she was. <laughs> she was 13, she looked older. It's like, no, the 13 year old girl didn't look of age. Word. And like also, you it's just your, when you hear these lines, it's your it's your job to do do gel, due diligence. You, yeah, you have sure. to, you have to oh, bet, yeah, you have to bet properly. Well, I think, yeah. um, and again, correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Twitter, whoever, I believe the Chris D'Elia thing was DMs. He never met these women. He never slept with these women. Mm-hmm. He was DMing women that he did not know was underage, and they were saying, "Hey, at one point, I did tell him that I'm under that I'm 16 or whatever." Yeah, just wanted to bring it up when we were on the topic because this this was a big thing over the past week. And I see he put out a statement saying that he had a sex addic- addiction. Yeah, that's that's all in this video. <clears throat> Discusses his entire sex addiction. How it Chris ran Rock, his life. Chris Rock had uh, he he spoke about that in one of his standups, right? About uh, on his yeah. recent press run when he did the deluxe album of the Tambourine, he yeah. got into some shit like that. He was addicted to masturbating. I think he said something like that. 
Oh well, that's a bag. <clears throat> that's a what? That's a bag. Addiction, to max, addiction to masturbate. Yeah, for sure. Like for sure. And you're not harming anyone. Like I'm totally cool if you are addicted to touching yourself. Mm-hmm. No one. As long as you're no not one, doing the public. No one is at danger. Yeah, right. yeah, you can't. Right. And can't niggas start touching yourself in front of you. You got a right to kick him in his ass. You know what I mean? That's yeah. You keep your jacking. keep your addictions to yourself, yeah, 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 buddy. Yeah, take that addiction in the bathroom, my nigga. <laughs> well, you can handle it that way. Or, I mean, what would you do? If someone was masturbating in front of me, I'd probably walk away. Listen, the comic attempted to explain. <laughs> you just asked me that question. I know, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> I would walk away. <laughs> or <laughs> run. Oh, nasty man. <laughs> yeah. ah, ah, what is that thing? <laughs> No, I'd be I'd be polite. I'd let him finish, but I'm gonna leave. Oh, I see your business. <laughs> <laughs> now I see how you. Who the, am I to judge a vice? Vision in the room. I see how you like lean in, like. Yeah. <laughs> I see, no, I get it. Who am I to judge a vice, man? Now. Yeah, I get it. Just I, I walk away. Yeah, no, I get it. So see, but when the listeners, well, when the listeners have an issue with it, when they listen back. They'll never say, yo, man, Rory and Parks wild out a little bit. They'll be like, yo, Joe Button, man. <laughs> Joe Button. Joe Button been gay for a year and a half. <laughs> like they got Joe, a timeline on your gay? No, gate? no, I'm seeing it. It said Joe Button keeps trying to force his gay shit. I'm like, yo, that's not me anymore. <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> I ended it. You stopped one episode ago. No, I stopped. <laughs> like I stopped, literally I stopped, one. I stopped in Park's old house. No. Oh my. Yes. No, it's been in this basement. No way. 100%. I disagree. It's been in this basement. <laughs> it's been in this basement. <laughs> You find it like, ooh, icky. It was. It. <laughs> Why are you guys talking like that? You flew it with us. Shut up. With us. Who's us? <laughs> Me and Parks. The division. See? This is the division? Shout out to the division. Weird division. <laughs> yeah. Weird division. The real division. Um, what else is super important? Any new music? I don't think any no, anything nah. came. We talked about it on Friday and that not much came out. Yeah, period. Yeah. Uh, Scream Man, you you typically do still the- ain't found what your favorite song is. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm still on that her record. Damage, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm damaged too. Yeah, I'm still on that record. Um, oh, did you see Will Smith says that he would consider running for a political office. What if we get Will Smith versus The Rock? Who and wins? That, and that's what they were afraid of. Yeah, you know how it's always like the the fans win. This is when the fans <laughs> lose. <laughs> That's what they were afraid of. Celebrities wanting to run for office. They're gonna mm-hmm. they're gonna put a rule in soon that you have to have years of political experience. I already see it coming. Like because now you're not gonna outvote The Rock. You're not gonna outvote Oprah Winfrey. You're not gonna outvote a lot of these celebrities that more than half the country loves. Who do you have winning if uh, Will Smith and The Rock <coughs> did that? Just asking. Where's Swizz? We don't have to stay on this. This is the real versus. Um, I'm going with The Rock. Will. Will what? Will Smith. Will Smith what? Wins. Wins what? Will versus Rock in a pl- political uh, versus. Listen, I think more people would love to have a president that looks like The Rock. Than- so- sorry, Smith family. You can't red table your way out of everything. <laughs> it's a little no. different when you're, right. when you're gonna, going against America. I'm going to find a song to champion. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Give me a second. I'll find Who some. Who you got, though? Who I'll you think will win at? I know uh, you're a fan of the, big fan of The Rock, but. I think The Rock will win. <laughs> <laughs> don't start Any, off. Don't start off telling me about my fandom. No, nah, you just said it. You just I said know you, you a big fan. Nah, of the you just rock. said you love the rock. And he's straying away. From, he's straying away from us. I don't know if I can no. claim him anymore. Really? Like I hate when my f- the rock is straying away from us. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't, you don't keep up with the you rock. Don't see it? I don't. I, honestly, I don't know what the rock has going on unless it's a movie coming out. Like I just don't. I don't. I don't follow him on social media. I don't. Okay. Uh, let's I'm see. about to say that's not The Rock. Who is that on the far right? <laughs> a few weeks ago, a, a few a, no, not a few weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, I meant to announce uh, this, and I never got around to it. But this was big uh, that uh, Uber drivers now must be classified as workers, and they'll receive minimum wage and paid they time should. off. Oh, really? Yeah, they so should. I'm gonna hit the round of applause for that because <clears throat> I understand how that could be important. Yeah, hell yeah. And while that's important, you know what I didn't hear in there? The requirement mm. for them to know how to drive. <laughs> man. They just have not figured that part out yet. No. Yes. Well, hold on. Let me ask. If uh, if they work more than what minimum wage is, they get more than minimum wage, right? They probably have a... Um, it'll be like a sales job, probably where it's commission versus your salary type of thing. Okay. If I had to guess. Because I can... Because they take a percentage off every single ride. That's mm-hmm. how it goes. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you do more than minimum wage, don't put me down minimum wage if I drive Uber seven 
days a week. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be Fuck a, that. a commission kind of situation. If I daytime guess. off is, is dope though. I, I I do like that. Yeah. I wonder um I wonder how many rides you have to do to to equal up to that though. I'm sure you can't just sign up for Uber and get that off rip. Yeah, I wonder if that'll hurt people that kind of moonlight with the the Ubering. Yeah, and switch between that and Lyft and or that. Yeah. That's yeah. one reason why I'm I'm really like at the, I'm just fed up like I'm getting a car now. Like I was spoiled with being able to just hop in and out of Uber, get out, no park, and I got to worry about looking for parking, going nowhere, going somewhere, I could just hop out. But like when you in an Uber and they can't drive, and you know how you get down, yeah, I'm in the back. She's like, "Fam, all you gotta do is go this way, <laughs> cut through all that shit." Like that's that's one of the things I'm just like, "All right, I can't, I can't deal with this shit." Yeah, my Uber driver took me to Jackson Heights the other night, and I was going to Astoria, so I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mad when I just get in and they got the uh, they got the partition in there, so like doing what they're supposed to be doing, but it's it's split like it's one for the driver's seat, one for the passenger seat. It's like broken up in the middle, like the air can get through. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the point of this? <laughs> yeah, that shit never. Uh, yeah. When they started that whole thing, one nigga one time had a shower curtain. I said, for this, yeah. <laughs> this exactly, this ain't going, this ain't going to cut it. This ain't going to stop nothing. Yeah, fam. You them, might as well rip this shit down. A few of them dudes tried to duct tape some shit up. There. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that ain't going to help you, fam. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's like just crack look, your window look, over. You'll be all right. The girl, the girls are doing way better with the gorilla glue than we are. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> You couldn't get this together. <laughs> Shit all falling. I'm like, fam, you know COVID can get right around. Yeah. Right, no right. problem. At least Shorty's wig looked good. Yeah. <laughs> Word. <laughs> I thought she might have needed to keep at that. <laughs> no, it's there. It's there for good now. Uh, what else? What else? What else is going Oh, this is important. SoundCloud's trying something new for a major music streaming service. That's honest. Paying indie artists a share of their actual listener subscription fees. The company calls this fan-powered royalties. Funny how every company is just calling this something uh-huh. different. <laughs> and it means a SoundCloud subscriber's subscription fee or advertising revenue will be divvied up among the artists they actually listen to, rather than going to a big pot and being split up among the platform's most popular artists. That's what I was just talking about. Wow, man. We've talked about this They listen to the podcast. This is a major change <laughs> for the industry and one indie artists have pushed for. Currently, most streaming uh, platforms reward the world's biggest stars with the most royalties. At Spotify, for example, the company figures out how many streams happened on its platform in a given country and then calculates what portion of those streams went to a specific artist. The result is that smaller acts who might not have massive reach but also have a dedicated loyal audience end up not making much money because they represent a smaller portion of the overall streams. Uh... That's exactly what I was talking about last last episode. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it plenty, plenty of times when I was saying how Drake should not have the same split on a Spotify or anything, period. Us talking right. about it, because I don't want us to get back down the road. Us talking <laughs> about it and some of these platforms going through whatever they needed to to come to this realization are two different things. Mm-hmm. We speak from the creative, creative standpoint and the consumer standpoint. Mm-hmm. But that is what makes this interesting, though, Joe, because we do speak from the creative standpoint, but we also speak from... The consumers, like we, we're still cons- we still consume. Yeah, yeah, I'm a and, fan. And you know, it, I'm just happy. It f- we can sit here and debate on what's right, what's wrong. I'm just glad that the conversations are happening more frequently and loud and more loud than they've been. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that companies look like they're trying to implement changes. Me too. I'm just happy that shit just seems like it's changing. And sometimes that's all you can hope. And ask for it. Baby steps, but yeah. Yeah. It's baby steps, but it's like, okay, but y'all do know that this is wrong. Right. And you need to fix this and that you are nothing without the creators. Mm -hmm. See, stop right there. That's where Joe disagrees. I don't know if they realize that. That the creators, they're nothing without the creators? You would be a you would be ignorant to think that. Your SoundCloud platform is anything without the creators. You would be ignorant to think that. You would be an ignorant businessman and an ignorant CEO to think that this platform that you've built is anything without the creators. I don't think any of the I don't think any of the platforms are running around saying in their in their executive meetings, "Hey, we're nothing without the creators. We should pay them now." No, I think they, they they I think they know that they're nothing without the creators. I think the problem is they feel like, well, we have the platform. Yes, they're the creators, but like the problem is the creators feel like they want more than we're willing to give. I think that's the, but they know that they're nothing without the creators. 
Like a drug dealer is nothing without his custies. I don't. Okay. I don't. What I'm saying is I don't think that whatever they know is what led to this decision. However they feel about the creators and their worth and like, hey, these guys are right. Let's pay them more. I don't think it was because they were so grace graceful. No, I, don't, I no, think. No, yeah, that, no, I, I agree think, with that. I think that. But they know they they're nothing be, without I creators. I think that they may be are looking at. Yes, that's true. And I think that they may be looking at some other alternatives that could occur in the next five years. I think that SoundCloud specifically in this example is just trying to do something differently than the other platforms are doing to make it more enticing for people to come there. For artists, smart. for artists to go, hey, I think I'm gonna it's only true. focus on promotion. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing worded different. If 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 uh, whoever else said, hey, we're doing subscriptions now. No. Like that's sound. This is their version of that. Hey, we're taking the subscription money, mm-hmm. and we're going to give you some of it. So no, it's this the is same a, this thing. Is entirely no? different. It's, no, it's, this is it's, entirely way, different. it's way different. Tell me more. So it's uh, rehashing what we talked about last week. I was saying that if I only listen to Thirty Eight Special on Apple Music and I give them ten ninety nine nine ninety nine a month, Special should get the bulk of my whatever. The non Apple cut of my nine ninety nine is. That, I understand that. Which which, what, which would entice Spesh to go, hey, maybe I should solely focus on the SoundCloud audience that I have and promote, hey, come listen to my album on SoundCloud because I know I'll get the most money from it. Correct. Which is the exact same thing as thirty eight Spesh having Going to a Patreon. Or anywhere where there is subscriptions mm-hmm. and now all the subscriptions go to thirty eight. But that's like yeah. having no. This is their version of that. It, it's the it, very same thing. But but this has a a community of rap listeners already for special. So does every and other I was, platform. I was talking right? about an extreme example because the reality is no yeah, one listens to just one artist. Right. They might listen to four or five artists, but instead of my nine 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 ninety nine going to every artist in the entire world, everyone gets a fraction of a cent. It should go to those five artists instead of yeah. splitting it up all over the place. Now. SoundCloud, apparently from this press release, what you read, is going to give it to those five artists instead of to Drake. Why am I getting? Why is Drake getting any of my money? I don't listen to any Drake songs. I listen to Drake songs, but no, in, example, example. Yeah, example. Why is Taylor Swift getting a, a, any portion of my nine ninety nine? Well, this, the same so this is the same exact thing. It's I don't not, understand what they keep trying to explain to me. Every time they explain it, because, I walk away with because, it's the same because exact you're thing. talking about a specific. Hey, I'm subscribing to you, and I'm giving you ten ninety nine a month. This is slightly different. Yeah. This is it's, it's, I'm paying ten ninety nine to listen to everything on on SoundCloud. I think you're paying the ten ninety nine to have the option to listen to anything, right? That you want, correct? That's what it is. Like you can, if, you can wake up one day, you might want to hear a Taylor Swift record. Just right, punch it in, and they'll give her my whatever. That. Based based off when it title Apple so they Spotify, they base a, they are dedicating a certain amount from the subscription to give to the act. Okay, but how they do it on the three major oh, ones? I don't care is, about that. I don't care about well, that. I'm, yeah, same, no, that's what, what matters. <laughs> not, not to me, because if they make that option of if they if at, if at every other platform they make that option available for every single artist, it changes the game. Then it's the same thing. It's but, the same. But they don't do that. But they don't else. do that. <laughs> Have they been listening to me for the last year? Mm-hmm. For the last year, I've been saying that's where we at. Everybody has to do it, and I'm with and you. they all have announced it except for Amazon. Every one of them have announced it. No, that's not true. You're talking about you're talking about uh, yeah. tip tip and subscription based I'm not to about, one specific. I'm, I'm not talking about tips. What are you talking about? I'm talking about subscription. I'm talking about. But you're how, talking I'm, about. I'm, I'm talking sorry. about how the platform allots subscription money. Uh-huh. Today, Apple. Let me not use Apple. Today, Huff and Puff mm-hmm. doesn't have anything that lets any consumer subscribe to any one act. Whatever they do with their subscription money, how they funnel it within the platform, it's cool. Same way at the record label when we said uh, Warner went public and none of the artists got a dime. Uh This is SoundCloud's version of that same premise, not the same exact steps, but it's the same thing. They're taking some of the money from prescription that they've been eating on forever. Uh-huh. Like Apple, like Huff and Puff, like anybody you name. They've been taking all of our royalties and shit and not showing us shit. And now the end of the road is here. And in their projections, I'm assuming they don't see that being fruitful in the future. Because there's a ripple effect now in the artists. If we take away the desperation from artists, mm. then these, a lot of these bad contracts not getting signed. Like mm. if we have so many, so many more options for newer artists to get paid. Mm. So yeah, SoundCloud is that community. They built that community of independent acts. But 
Huff and Puff's got a community over there. Google's sure. got a community. YouTube's sure. got more community than anybody in the world. That is a fact. Every company, everyone will have to do it different, but I'm going to say it again. Everybody is going to have to do this. I agree. And oh, some, right. and some okay. version I agree with you on that. Okay, the, the, the way, the way, way you were wording you, it was that they already did it. Yeah, correct. No, no, it's coming. Oh, Dude, okay. We, we I'm sit, not, but the, we sit here every day. It's we, coming. The way you worded it sounded oh. like you were saying oh, everyone already does this already. Yeah. And Parks and I were saying no. They, I'd be they go the off. Uh, it's coming. Yeah. They go off everyone, no matter what the subscription base and I be is. It's a zero point zero 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 one penny for everybody. And I'd be trying to get y'all and the creators to hey, then let's paint a world for what happened if it don't come. Because if it don't come, it's up. It ain't whatever been happening. It's not gonna continue to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. That that's it. So yes, kudos to SoundCloud. They laid on this. They yeah. laid on I this. But it. they're early because they're the first ones to be doing it. They're not implementing it. They're not early. They are late. Well, they are late in general. Everyone's late. They're the first ones to do it of the major DSPs that I've seen. Yeah, correct. They are. And kudos to them for doing but that. But and, they, and they've admittedly said they've they missed the, the only boat ones. Stuff. But they one of the only ones that got an era named after them. True. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. They've, yeah. they've, and that's where this gets different. They've admitted they said they missed the SoundCloud rapper era. They didn't make money off of it. They didn't. That's they didn't a go huge in bed issue. with. They didn't yeah. go in bed with any of the artists, and now they're trying to do that with this here. Uh, they're working on some joint venture shit that is easier for the artist as far as money goes. They're, uh -huh. they're working on their mistakes, which I think is dope. This is smart, and I love it. Yeah, they they, they the admittedly bomb. missed the boat, and they said, yeah, "Hey, we're going to redo it and this work is on smart this." And I, love I agree. It. And I'm I totally I'm, agree. Because really SoundCloud still has an audience, and, no matter what. And and take heed. Uh, the rest of you DSPs, please. And put fucking credits on your shit. But will this matter? Most importantly, I yes. like that. Will this matter? That takes from the artist. When too. some artist of the bigger <laughs> platforms <laughs> roll out their version of this as well. I ho I, we hope so. And I think that's what Parks is saying. Kudos to them because they did it. No. Hopefully now it's a ripple effect. Stop kudos in these. Kudos these niggas on y'all time. I'm holding them to the fire still. No, They're, no, no. I get what you're saying. They're late. They're late to it, but... No, no, no. Not only are they late, I want them to be prepared. I'm not kudos in them. When, when the rest of these people do the same thing, see, unlike most, I believe SoundCloud is, has a place in the ecosystem, a big one. Absolutely. Huge it's, one. it's been Huge. mismanaged. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But I would like them to manage better when Huff and Puff rolls out their version when Spotify who just opened up in mad new countries mm. does the same thing no they need we the little guy the independent guy need them to be able to counter mm -hmm. that okay I agree that's what I'm saying like I don't know if Clubhouse is gonna survive Twitter adding Clubhouse to Twitter like yeah. I don't know I don't know mm -hmm. either Especially Snapchat. with all this information about shit getting leaked and privacy concerns and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's interesting. I'm glad that they rolled out first with this. I can't wait to see how it plays out. And I can't wait for other platforms to roll out their version of this. Because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm even skeptical about that now. Like, I don't know if Huff and Puff having a subscription service helps need to know. Mm. Like, who does that help outside of the people who already have huge followings? Okay. How yeah. is the smaller artist? I'm saying artist now, but in my case, podcaster. Same, same idea, same concept. How do tips and this bullshit ain't enough? I'm not kudos in none of these people until I see it work. Mm. Thank you for doing what. I'm not thanking you. You you started the fire, not SoundCloud. They started the fire. I'm not thanking niggas for putting the fire out that you started. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. Hey, they. I'm of the belief they had no choice but to come around. Well, I to agree this. with that. And if not now, then in my kid's life, and if not his life, but it was gonna happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my belief. Damn, I'm screaming. I didn't mean to. I was, no, I was that's cool. Okay. At some point, you have to pay people. It's a passion. It's a passion, it's a passion project for you. Yeah, kudos, but not all of them. I'm like not giving you all <laughs> the kudos until I, I, until I see it. Yeah. Listen. I'm just curious what the deal they did with the three majors on here. That's what I'm curious about. Said they came to a conclusion with the three major labels to get this done. I want to know what that split is. Because mm. that could change things drastically if I'm not... We'll, ne we'll never know that. If, if yeah. I'm not an independent artist and I'm... Pocket watch. <laughs> this, this, entire, watch. this entire thing is pocket watch. What are you talking about? <laughs> this this entire label, conversation was pocket watch. No, we watching our pocket. We could do that. We could watch our shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm saying if, I, if I'm signed to a major and the major does this deal... That money's going to the major, and then the major's going to funnel it to me. The major, I, I'm not sure how much longer the major's going to be viable. I disagree. 
Except for for back catalog stuff. You disagree? Why? How, how long you think? Guess. Let's guess it. That the major label is going to uh, be around. I feel for, like we have this talk at least do. once yeah, every do. five months. That's fine. Yeah, we do. things change. Mm-hmm. Uh, things change. Things change. I, th- I think the way majors with the capital they have, the power that they have, uh, how they've adapted to every single time, especially with going into streaming and having equity in every major streaming service. They know how to adapt. 15 years. They know how to adapt. 10 to 15 years. I only got Vivendi up there. Uh, Universal. It's, it's probably it. Warner will be around because they're so strong. And the labels I'm talking about, I'm only talking about their the, the music label portion of their business. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about all the other shit that they do in the world that they're successful at. Mm-hmm. 10 to 15 years, right? I got Silva coming here on Friday to walk me through this NFT stuff. Okay, cool. Because I was going to bring up the Grimes... Elon Musk's wife or girlfriend or whatever they are put out an album and made like $6 million off it uh, this week. But by the way, what you're saying is kind of my point with because they're so successful in so many other ventures that aren't going away, they'll have the capital to be able to move that money from universal movies and say, all right, let's buy this this streaming site. Let's do like they have the capital to stay alive. They do have more capital. For over 15 years from now. I read a really interesting article about the guy from Hypnosis. Hip, 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 and that's hypnosis not true. Yeah. that's buying everybody's I'm catalog. All, I'm arguing with Rory on that. Okay. Whenever you finish. Oh no, I was just reading an article about I'm how he's been one. outbidding all the uh, labels to buy everything until the Bob Dylan catalog was the first thing that they really like just went tripled whatever his bid would was. He got money. I'm just waiting. <laughs> he's got, well, he's got <laughs> investors. Yeah. He's got a million investors. Oh no, I mean I'm just saying him and that company they got money. Yeah. <laughs> you think the de- decisions are made from the money that people have in their pocket or by the money they see themselves making? A little uh, bit of both, I talk about think. you know like the majors. Well, in this instance, we're talking about the majors. Uh, I think the amount of money they will make in the long run. That's what I think, too. Yeah. I'm talking to you. That's but it, why I'm but confused it takes by... money that they have now, too, though. Don't get it twisted. Uh, Joe B. All right. So the same thing we say how a Spotify and Apple are tech companies. We don't consider them music. Music is the advertising for the tech. I think Universal, Warner, Sony want to stay in the tech business that has to do with music. So they will invest in artists to do so. Okay. I agree with that. My response is, if, my response to that is, if you're still trying to figure out tech, you've lost the race. That's my response to that. If, If you are new to tech world or just getting familiar with tech world, when now tech world is entering another realm of tech world, I think you are severely behind. Can I respond to that I'm, quickly? Let me just get this out before okay. I forget. I'm, I'm doing my best outside of this pod to go and get well informed on all of this NFT stuff. Because, whoa, that changes the world. Like It's literally an entirely different world in some cases. Now there's a viable means to literally lock labels out of all art transactions. Mm-hmm. What if the creators come up with uh, their own coin like a Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. And now you, hey, sorry, exec guy, you can't even enter this art shit. That's where Joe thinks this is going in 10 to 15 years, 20 years tops. But it took 10 years to watch what's going on now. So so, so I that, got it being a 10-year thing. To that, on a smaller scale, just of what we were saying with, I don't know how long Clubhouse is going to last when Twitter wants to add in the same technology. The same way Instagram buys up Vine, buys up all this other technology anytime it gets hot, it's because they got Instagram, hot too fast. Instagram has the capital and the power that is much different. And if they want to just buy the technology... They can stay that way. And I feel the same way with the major labels when certain things get brought in that may take them out. No, you're not understanding it. If you, it, that's not a proper response to what I'm saying. Like Jim Jones explained it. The Jim Jones coin. I'm not, no, no, I'm talking about the coin thing. I was talking about originally what... Oh. We're not talking about the everything gotta, gotta, you were just gotta, saying. Gotta. I, I was talking about what's going to keep the majors, our original conversation. That's what I was talking I about. I think all the majors are even more afraid than they were when Napster was out. That's what I think. Uh, I, think, I, I, won't, I, think, I won't disagree with you there I at all. I think they're not really telling you. I think they're you, more, more on you, their toes. You get a few of these dudes in the closet, and they'll panic about what happened with TikTok. They'll tell you. Like, <laughs> seriously? Yeah. Speaking of, mm-hmm. 
like, yo, man, we got to do something about TikTok. That's what they say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and a lot of the I time, I think they're though, scared shitless of what's going on. This <laughs> NFT stuff, let us let a creator come up with a coin. But, but oh. And now every creator is just investing in that coin, and that's how we do art now. But see, Joe, the, the beauty in this is- Tell this, me how Interscope gets involved. It would take one of y'all to let them in. One of you creators. That's why. Sure. That's why I said this. The beauty in this is Nasty. that this is all birth from creators Nasty. feeling like they weren't paid or they weren't treated fairly. I got a class action suit coming to at least nine of you niggas about where all the money is. Hmm. Hmm. Not now. I got work to do. <laughs> you ain't gonna give me shot. I've been watching too many docs. <laughs> Imagine if Joe's trying to unearth all of the publishing and royalties and music well, that, nah, that we're here. actually owed. Your ass is out of Come here. Come on, Yo, I was... Your ass is grass. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna be like, well, he was depressed. <laughs> These niggas, right? He did write that song. <laughs> <laughs> I was having that cryptic conversation <laughs> when, I, when I was in Florida. And I was sitting there while I was having the conversation. I was moving my money from one of my accounts to another account. 12. And I said, wait, this is cryptocurrency. Yeah. Bank yeah. of America, fam, this is cryptic. Mm-hmm. I'm moving money that does not exist. It's not tangible. It's not moving nothing. Numbers. It's a fucking it's number. Numbers. And I just moved it mm-hmm. to another made up account that was a number. And then that number went up when I moved it from that number. Motherfucker, Bank of America is cryptocurrency. Are oh, you big broke? <laughs> Had to move something around, huh? I mean, I got people to take care of. <laughs> hey, the bitches knew how broke I was when I went any time that Chase app opened up. <laughs> I opened that Chase app up and get to switching some shit. <laughs> hey, take a little bit of that savings. Oh, dump, no, no, no. This, dump it this, over this, here for that, that gyro we have. I said, <laughs> Joe, Joe, savings hey, for gyro. Listen, man. Joe, I'm, call, I'm, I'm, LL, LL, I'm LLC LL. Twitter. I moved it from one LLC to the other. Excuse Yo, that, your savings. That's what my... <laughs> I'm LLC Twitter. Hey, that's when my black privilege show up. Like when the card declined over like a dollar fifty per. Whoa, buddy! <laughs> I, no, the whole line will wait, and we'll stand here while I call the bank. Trust me, your machinery's mistaken. They're like, I don't know, Poppy. Nigga, I have two dollars. What you don't know, man? <laughs> All right, forget it. Anytime Bank of America. They're all laughing too hard. You got you got the client right. Anytime Bank of America texts me now when I'm traveling, hey, do you recognize all these charges? In my head, I'd be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're mine. I was blackout drunk. I don't recognize them. Nah, these well, aren't really mine. That's kind of the thing. Like, when my people call me, it's like they're trying to trick me to not remember it. Hmm. Hey, you, hey, where were you at 3.57 p.m. At, uh, on Wednesday 17 months ago? And did you buy a lollipop? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> what is it? I can't read it to you. Well, nigga, get off my damn phone then. You nah, can't that, tell me what it is. That time when my car got scammed and I came on here and I said someone bought like $7,500 worth of TVs from Walmart overnight and I woke up. They went through every Uber I ever did in my entire life. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when that Uber was. Man, they got my driver not too long ago. He went somewhere, le- dropped his wallet, left his wallet, or got pit pocketed. Who knows? But when he picked me up from the pod and we was headed headed home, he was like, man, they're on a terror out there with my wallet. <laughs> I, said, I said, so? I said, what happened, man? They're I- on a terror out there. <laughs> they're having a ball. <laughs> nah, that- I said, I said, wow, what would you see? He said, oh, Uber, Domino's, Party City. <laughs> Party City. No, they was running so shit up. <laughs> it's happening to me. I start judging Video the charges, game. too. I'm like, yo, whatever, whatever dude got my card is sick. Yeah, what are you doing? going crazy on so shit, man. <laughs> but then you got to call the bank, and they start interrogating you off every last charge yeah, that, that you've ever done. And I'm sitting there that like, I don't know when I took this Uber for $5.75. Maybe that was them. <laughs> Like, hey, can we focus on the, the three grand right here? No, 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 no. What yeah, happened with this $10 true. Uber? Is that you or not? <laughs> I don't know. So much to my surprise, weed is legal in Detroit too now. Is it really? Yeah. That's nice. Doesn't shock me. Really sexy dispensaries that they have Ooh. out there. Got me to thinking. Boy, it'd be cool to open up a dispensary. Mm. Since it seems like... My lineage was just birthed for that. You can guess the name. 
Bud Din. <laughs> Yo. You sure this wasn't a rap you wrote with Royce? I'm just walking around. <laughs> hey, while it settles in your brain, I'm going to walk around. Uh, Let it set it. Uh, yeah, maybe we should eat a bit. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, well, nah. hey, it's in their brain. Yeah. Everything I do. Yeah, yeah, nah. But let it sit. No, I got you. Yo, while, while you're up, you mind pouring me a cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, while you're up. <laughs> the bud den. It's a den. No, I'm putting it together. I'm doing the math. Because a den. No, it's a den. I understand the den. My parks did the science. All y'all do, all y'all do is joke. So I was asking him it. while so he was we'll, up if you could pour me a... So we'll get to it. Uh... <laughs> Glass showcasings everywhere. Oh, glass mm. house too. Come on, I didn't even man. think about that one. Alien OG. Mm. Wedding cake. Mm. Huh? Orange gelato. Mm. Anything you want in there. It is 420, episode 420. So Mad Strains. It is. Well, come on, man. Episode 420. I didn't even introduce Ball, this episode. Wow. Up, man. Yo, so wait now. I got something more pocket. Mad Strains at Bud Den. Yo. <laughs> no, Bud Den? I should probably smoke a bowl. I'm down. Hookah is there. Rory on the ox. Y'all laughing. Now look, it's coming together in their head. It's a vibe. Huh? Brand new emotional oranges. You never heard it. I'm going to play it today. bitches here. For my sleeper. It's women here. Mm-hmm. Look, they laughing. No, I'm with you. They laughing. I'm rolling with I the Bud Den. The Bud Den? oil burning. The Bud Den? I'm hey. I'm on. Big security at the door. Everybody ain't getting in here. Right. It, 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 she got to look like something. What's up? <laughs> Don't come in here, nigga. Come in here smelling like Joe Malone. Right. We ain't just letting people in smelling like the whole strain. No. Got Sorry. You. I feel you. They joking. Zach Efron good? <laughs> he oh no, Gay's relax. welcome. You and Zach walk Gaze right in. Welcome. <laughs> you and Zach coming right in. Hand in hand. Don't worry about it. I'm no, separate. Wanna... I'm cleaning, moving the door for you and Zach. Yeah, no, I, I want to try section. to impress him, show him yeah, like a cool no. little low spot. That's you a know. good first date spot. No, yeah. no, come on. And, and the do si is rolled up when you come in. Mm. You getting the do si I like yeah, it. I got something in my pocket upstairs. I'm going to lay something. Hey, it ain't that do si It ain't that do si Got that monogram. Yeah, Everyone trying to move to Cali Let's just move to Detroit Or Jersey oh, Open the bud then I got a few calls About investment opportunities And in, in some uh, Growing farms mm. Yeah That's big That's the wave what a, big. One of my friends is uh, It's about to get up up. <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends is uh, Preemptively Starting that process In New York For when it does mm-hmm. Eventually come legal in New York You got damn right You yeah. damn skippy yeah. Get to it I don't know what the next 10 years look like to y'all, but like... It looks like fun. It looks like fun. It looks like a lot of uh, growth. I'll ask y'all something. Come on, don't, don't ever move my smoothie like that. Health is wealth. Health <laughs> All right, then pick it up, then don't move it. Health is wealth. And I'm sorry if you feel under attack, provoked, antagonized, or assaulted in any way. That's not what we do at the JBN. That's not what we do at the JBN. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk to HR. That's not what we do at the JBN. We got Oh, I keep forgetting more of HR. Yeah, we got that. His, his door is always open mm-hmm. <laughs> Or closed Depending on who Needs yeah. to talk yeah. What was I trying to talk about I was trying I had somewhere to take us man. Uh, legal, uh, legal legal marijuana Oh you yeah, know that, that was then I don't, I don't have nothing near And we were laughing I like the idea of the bud den Me too I get it I think that's sick I also The problem I also think it's very expensive Oh it is It's, it's expensive close. right Probably all the but if it done I right, mean, I don't know if you're tell me how I think it's the it's probably all the permits and licensing yeah, and shit that costs. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's, and it's and it's not easy getting it. They make you that's jump where you through. get. That's where you got to be ghost from power, play Luke the political Serp, game. Yes, absolutely. Get cool with Lorenz Tate, the mayor. Absolutely. <laughs> you could do that. How, but how much? How much you think that would cost? Like with licenses, permits. I would know. How, how big of a, a square space? Yeah. Um, three of these rooms. It's so like a regular storefront ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how I think you'd want to set it up one point five up front to get it done. You think that's a nice? Do you think that's a recoupable business? And it's yeah, oh, for sure. So yeah. and how long? It's just expensive to get in. Yeah. They gonna need to pay that one point five. Club, something that's membership based. Maybe. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Why Subscription. Membership based, but Bud Den House instead of the Soho House. That's how they do it at cigar bars. They get your own locker so you can keep your your strands in there that you got. Y'all already shit. know who I'm gonna have in there serving it up too. Something nice, Roy? Rosa. Oh, mm. I'll smoke every day. Thanks. Thank you. 
Thanks, buddy. Smoke every day. At the I don't need Rory running around in two piece serving up the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I <In> two piece. <laughs> back with their papers. I have lost weight. Which do you prefer? And I look pretty good. Can't wait to show you. My summer body is is coming in. I wouldn't wear a two piece. It'd be a one. The backwood scam has gotten a lot worse since the last time I told y'all about the backwood scam. They still on that shit? No, it's bad. You might not get one good backwood. Oh, no. oh, you oh, might not. Yeah, yeah. But that's why I've been it's on the papers, worse man. Now. Yeah, I do papers too. That's why I've been on the papers. Papers and balls. Uh, fuck that. Papers and balls. Papers, man. Or the um the glass blunt. Those are two that. That's a little crackish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like the way the pipe pause. Uh, makes the weed taste. So okay. When it goes through the water, it cools okay. it. It makes it taste better. But when it's just straight glass, no, the glass one. Oh yeah, if it's, it's if it's like the the bong or something like that. That's yeah, different. I like how the bong yeah, makes yeah, the, yeah. the weed taste, but yeah. the, the straight pipe is too. Uh, I'm, I'm with Maul aesthetically. It just makes me feel like crackish. A little crackish. Yeah. I got I got a crack as in my family. I know when they hit that stem. I know what that <laughs> shit looks like. I didn't tell you to find a vein. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's just a different drug. That's not crack. <laughs> yeah, that's a different drug. What the fuck. <laughs> That's a whole Got the one. needles with the bud at the bud then? Yeah. Nah. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 No needles allowed there. No. But I won't let your joke fly like you, me, Maul, and Parks ain't been around chicks that we liked a lot. And then they was like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Want to come? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's party <laughs> nah, time. you go ahead. I seen someone try to shoot crack shit in their vein one time. Shoot crack, in, shoot the crack veins? in their veins? Yes. Not in the bathroom? They tried to, you know, they cooked it down, tried to purify it and all that shit. Yeah, it was, it was a wild sight. What? Yeah. They nah, were they were different. they were in a rough place. That's have you checked on them recently? No, actually I haven't. They might be out of here. They might be. <laughs> Trying that is yo. Yeah. Shooting crack? That's Never crazy. Even heard of that. That's yeah. insane. Well, if you cook it down, I guess maybe you could get no, something out of it. No, you can definitely do it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's crack. We're not we're not saying it's not possible. Yeah. You know this all all this is the same, right? Mm, I don't think it's all the same. No, for the most what part. Think, what's, what's the I question? think pills and heroin is the same for sure. <laughs> is, there no, is there no relation to pills, heroin, uh, heroin, crack, coke? No, crack and coke. coke is crack and coke. The same. Are crack and coke yeah, is the it's same. Just, it's just, you're just mixing it. You're and we, pills y'all do are believe that there's a that cooking it. Pills now are. That's some synthetic of the other heroin. Stuff. Pills are synthetic heroin. Well, yeah. it depends yeah. on the pill. Yeah, the meth, the methamphetamines for the most part have heroin. Yeah, but uh, well, no, even like cotton is is um, heroin, heroin, yeah, for sure. But you, I mean, Darvis, I think it's, it's Adderall Darvis. is still in that's that a pill. Meth. That's a meth. Meth. That is, but that's more of a coke and Ritalin speed thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, it's it's all you could just up clean, or down. You could just yeah. clean your room the normal way. You don't need to do that. <laughs> that is <laughs> very <laughs> Yeah, I need you can just suck it up and clean your. <laughs> what do you gotta do? I gotta clean up. <laughs> man, you could just yeah, you could just you could just mop and get Windex. a Roomba, man. Yeah, like what the fuck is wrong with you? You Take gotta stress like, yo, no, I got I got work to do. <laughs> so how have you survived <laughs> your whole life? <laughs> I gotta clean this whole fucking house. So you gonna take an Adderall because you gotta clean your house and the bathroom and the kitchen and you just clean, bro. You don't gotta be on Adderall. Yeah, grab a Red Bull. What's <laughs> up? Anything up? Y'all niggas, man. I swear to God. Yeah, I love that. Listen, I think these new kids are good at the slang. I do. I do. I'm gonna come clean. Whoever the the age group was, who was that uh six years ago? Who was that? Z? Yeah, One of those. Millennials, X? Yeah. Millennials? Yeah. No, y'all just say that for anything. What's a millennial? <laughs> millennial is 80. And it's not what I'm talking about. Nobody born in 80 was making this up. No, but the millennial 90- stretches for like 25 years. Yeah. Really? I'm talking about them. Uh, millennials is from What's 19- Rory? I'm a millennial. millennial. Just like you. 1980 to 2000. That's, That's wrong as hell. You got to be born between 1980 and 2000? Yeah. Okay, fine. 1980 Damn, Rory is down with me? No, no, no. 81 <laughs> is millennial. No, we not. <laughs> no, we're not the same gang. We gang. We're not gang. Nah, you gang. Save on. We all gang, gang, man. Don't it's touch up. my We gang, again, gang. It's up. Do it again. It's up. <laughs> we're not I gang. I double tap. <laughs> it's up. I'm not the same as y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Google says. Mad? Scream Man. Now, mad? I'm not that's my point. Thank you, Scream Man. The Pew oh, that's the Research real one. Center. You don't even know about Pew. Yes. You don't know about Pew. Don't know about this Pew. says the, the Nelson Pew Mandela uh, Research can, Center. Yo, can I read? Yo, don't speak Nelson's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's up for you now. <laughs> the Pew Research Center defines millennials as born from 1981 to 1996 
choosing these dates for blah, 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 blah. I don't care. That's always, that's what I grew up learning. Now, if they change that, then y'all are educating me. But wait, what does this have to do with September 11th? It says, because it, <laughs> they just saying choosing, shit. Choosing these dates for key political, economic, and social factors, including September 11th. So only 1981 and 96 felt 9 11. Well, back. <laughs> Back to the point that I was attempting to make, uh, Gen Z fucked up whatever they was trying to come up with with the slang. But these new kids, you like it? I like what they do. G- Gen Z, they say is ninety seven to two thousand twelve slash twenty fifteen. See, I don't even know what that means. I'm talking about the later half of Gen Z to know the cool niggas. I like what they're doing. That's all. That's all I got. Um, all right, I don't have anything else that I need to get to. Nothing is pressing. Nothing is that important to me. Did y'all see the uh, the Biggie doc? I, li- I liked it. Oh, I didn't see it. It's good. I, I, liked I, it. I did it, see it's it. What, it's what we they're was telling me it's good. Be. It was a lot to do with I didn't him, see it. his childhood, growing they, up. They mm. talked to a, a lot of people from his childhood that we hadn't yeah. heard from. Some that we have heard from, but a lot way, of the, more, way more in detail. A lot of the footage was D-Rock's personal footage from being on tour and yeah. just moving around with Big. Um, it was dope, man. Which I didn't—I didn't know that D Rock like had a camera on the entire time, and I yeah. love that he held all this footage, he never gave it up, there you go. like till it was the right situation. Mm-hmm. It, it it was really dope. It wasn't your typical big doc. They stayed on the pox shit for a second, which I loved. Mm. Like, we don't need to get into this. This is about big right That's now. That's great. Mm. Yeah, it, it was good. It was a real good. I, I really enjoyed it. Got got into to Miss Wallace a lot. I mean, I know she's been in other docs, but this one felt more. Miss Wallace ish mm. got into Big's uncle who did music too in Jamaica. Like it was a bunch of stuff I really didn't know. You know the interesting thing because we spoke about it on the on, on here on the pod a few weeks ago is like how I said like when we jumped the the Chinese delivery man we ordered like two hundred dollars worth of food and we beat him up and took the food. Mm. We didn't do that because we were starving. Like I said, my mom cooked every night. It was food in my crib. It's just interesting to see Big Catholic school. Mom had a job, you know what I mean. Lived in a nice, nice apartment. Like, so this wasn't a this wasn't a kid that didn't have, mm. or like you know was poverty stricken, and it's just to him trying to find his way, and his friends in the community, and like just trying to figure out who he is, find his identity, find his voice, mm. and he chose to go the route of the streets, which his mom. Which any mom tries do, to you, keep your, your kids from. Do you think there's anything to the statistic of um, that being more probable when the dad is not in the household? There's a lot to do with that, for sure. And when you don't have that male figure in the household, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it gives, especially a son, the room to want to kind of find his way as a man, find who he is as a person, without having a proper figure in his life to kind of guide him. And he had the musician guy that lived on his block, that he said he saw he would have like pretty women he was dating, bringing them back to his crib. And he was like, damn, I want that. Like, mm. this guy plays, he does music. And it was interesting to see Big was a real heavy R&B guy. That's I thought that big, was yo, interesting. That's big, surprising. Big, in some of this footage, was singing, singing. Yeah. <laughs> like, he hit a couple notes that I didn't think Big could hit. <laughs> yeah. He was singing on this doc. Yeah, I didn't know Big was such an R&B head. We, we always give a lot of that credit and do credit to Puff about that R&B side of Big because he always wanted to do like the B-side street shit. Mm-hmm. Big was an R&B head according to all his friends and this footage. Like he really fucked with making actual songs and melodies and... Doesn't surprise me. Couldn't go to sleep without That's, listening to West Country. Not uh, shocking country, to me either, but music. super, super interesting. Yeah. Not shocking but super interesting. I can see it not being shocking. I'm saying what, where the credit usually was due with Big and that more melodic... R&B stuff that he did with samples and certain shit. That that was really big. Well, listen, I I never envisioned Puff forcing Big to do player haters on Life After Death. Yeah. Like, there's some records that you could kind of suggest someone do. Mm-hmm. That's not one of them. Mm-hmm. A record where you just sing the whole thing. <laughs> Put your head. Like, you got to kind of enjoy that to do that. Mm-hmm. It was some of the bars that he was... Uh, in the clip I saw with Puff talking about how melodic he was and how big of an R&B guy he was, it was some other big lines that came up where I was like, oh, I guess he really did sing that one. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't rapping at all. I thought it was interesting. Uh, and again, I haven't seen this, so don't take my word for anything. I'm rushing home to watch not only this Biggie doc, but uh, Woody versus uh, Allen versus Farrell. Second I, saw, episode. I saw the first two episodes that was out. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. 
But you could you could look at Woody Allen and see a little creepy. On Patreon, I'm gonna really un, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really unpack my what I think white crimes are. White crimes? Yeah. White collar. No, no. <laughs> white skin. No, that's something that white people made up to make it sound sexy. Incest, that's true. Incest is y'all's. Human trafficking is y'all's. There's mad shit that's y'all's. Don't sound as pretty as white collar. Well, I don't. I don't think yeah. sex trafficking and fucking your family member is white collar crime. I no, was no, thinking no, no, more. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know if you're up for that. Uh, but before we got off the big shit, I did want to ask Maul the lack of Little Kim in it and how deep they went into Junior Mafia and left Kim out of everything. Is that what happened? I felt it. Uh, correct. You, you guys it. can correct. Well, when you guys do watch it, she I wasn't just felt. There, was she? I felt a lack of presence from Kim. In she wasn't the, even in interviewed the, in the doc. No, no, I'm, I know that. Okay. I'm saying in general, like there was other Footage members and everything. Of, of Junior Mafia. They just got into the Junior Mafia story, and I felt like Kim being such a big part of his life and his early years. I felt Kim was non-existent really in this doc, the mm-hmm. way she really was. In the big story. Mm -hmm. Because they focused on St. James Place and his upbringing. Mm -hmm. Kim being a part of that. Right. And stayed away from the pot gossipy bullshit for the most part. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to bring it up. If you noticed it. I felt it when it was over. I was like, wow, they really didn't touch on Kim like really at all. Definitely noticed it because she's not there and she was and she was she was there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you definitely feel it and notice it. But. You know, I can't speculate on why or, you know, why wasn't she a part of it? That's on my list of uh, hip hop secrets to never be on earth, by the way. I, I do have a list of those that I just never want to hear more about. And whatever dealings actually uh, transpired between Big and Kim as it pertains to mm-hmm. some of the stuff that was going on back then. I don't think the public needs to be privy to it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's none of our business. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need to uh, unearth those scars or traumatic times for Kim, Faith, Right. The, uh, Big's mom or anybody involved. Like some things are just better okay, I think, left unsaid. I think you're missing my, my point. I'm not talking about their alleged relationship He's as far as romantic she partners. Wasn't in it at all. I'm saying they were talking about how Big was setting up Junior Mafia's first album and how he was writing all the things. Like he put together this whole. C's was saying, like, yo, he was on a, a record that never came out and just said Junior Mafia in the beginning. And we was like, yo, what's Junior Mafia? And he was like, that's y'all now. Like, Mm-hmm. Big's whole scheme in his head of putting all his friends on and, and making them have, and even uh, Miss Wallace said like I feel like all of them would have had all these albums had Big still been alive because he had this plan in his head mm-hmm. the Kim thing to me is important in there I don't I don't care what their actual relationship was that's none of my business that's not what I'm talking about when you watch it you'll understand the Junior Mafia angle and how Kim was the number one artist on that and it just felt weird of how good this doc was that Kim wasn't a part of it and I can understand that because Kim didn't like any of the Notorious movie. She's had some problems. It just felt odd in the middle of the story that Kim was not any okay. type of mention. Hit my question to you, and I haven't seen it. I'm just asking. Do you think that the story of Junior Mafia can be properly told without stepping into that romant, uh, romanticism a little bit? Properly, no. Properly, no. Okay. But the way they were talking about <laughs> just, just music. So just if they music. skip it. You know, you know, it was something. Skip. If they skip it, then yeah, you know, I, well, I'm saying just just music wise. Yeah, which yeah dabbles back into it, but it was just a, a very odd thing throughout the whole thing. The Biggie Doc rushing home to see it. Woody vs. Farrell rushing home to see it, and I don't know what Franklin doing, but he better be on the run because Wednesday night, <laughs> Scully on your ass again. <laughs> <laughs> I found and, his I found his Instagram page. He looked tough there too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for him, though, man. I'm happy. And Savon, write down like, white collar crime. Great actor. For, yeah, yeah. And, great for actor. Next, for next week he, to he get into your theories. Shit, you know, in his real life, personal life, he went through some some tough times. But it's good to see him back acting and having such a prominent role in a, in a big show on TV. Like this is dope. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I can't wait to watch it tonight. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? Hold up, man. Oh, this is episode 420, though, so you know I got to put that. Put some in there if you're real. Yeah, man. No. I'm, uh, let me see if I can get somebody on the phone. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Smoking that see. good monogram. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm going to say, I'm going to Oh. Let me see what I could do right quick. I got somebody to get on the phone. Give me a second. After you get them on the phone. Give me two seconds. Let me see what's really going on. Doodle doodle. Doodle doodle. Doodle doodle. Oh, come on, man. I'm trying to get flowers. Answer the phone. Answer the phone. 
All right. People don't want flowers today. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll call back. Uh, what, what are you saying, Maul? Yeah, put it up, man. Put it up. Super Reg. Huh? Super Reg. Big runts. <laughs> Big runts popping. Uh, Let me see that. That plug. Is it La La or Zaza? Blaka. Oh. <laughs> don't pass inter- me his phone. Don't interrupt my verse like that again. <laughs> my bad. Is it La La or Zaza? Blaka. What's um, um what's the reason of 420? Then pass burner the ta ta molly mall and I'm talking to all of y'all baller fall what you think? baller fall <laughs> this crazy yo Saha, what up it's mall from the Joe Button podcast how you feeling bro what it do my guy ain't shit man first of all it's good to see you doing well feeling well man I appreciate that brother appreciate that good <laughs> job Oh, I can't hear you. Where, where my boy at, man? Where he at? He right here, man. He he, he he sound like he sound like he right, and I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, that, hey, tell him, tell him he got to catch up. Saha, what it do, Joe? Oh my God! Listen, man, you said that shit about me. I've been listening to your album all day now, preparing. <laughs> well, first, first of all, hey, before, hey, what up? I, one thing about it, bro. I don't care what you say. I've, I've been listening to you, bro. So no. it's, it's respect. Even though I don't mind getting on stage I know. and putting on for the culture. I know, man. I know. So it's, it's all in fun. Early, I was saying how I, I don't think it's fair that you are uh, you are picking on a, a retired non-active rapper. And right. truthfully, I'm, a, yeah. I'm in fear for my life when I go outside, <laughs> when I hear music now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, th- I think you're picking on me because I'm retired. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, you're right, bro. They always bring that one little spat up. I told, but you see, I told him. I said, "Nah, me and Joe good. Joe's a fan. He just don't. He feel like I should do my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so, mean, yeah. My only thing with that, yeah, you know, I don't even need to rehash that. But yeah, that was it. Outside of that, it's everything, man. I enjoyed the interview. First off, let me tell you, we 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 so happy that you just in good spirits and everything yes. is cool and the shit sure. that we read about. We won't speak about it because words have power, but thank God you okay, first and foremost. Man, thank you so much, bro, for real. Man, I seen the clip that y'all did speak on that, and I was, I was going to tell you, man, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, no, that was sure. that was, that was, that was super heavy uh, and super important to read, like, right now with just some of the loss that we've experienced as a culture. Uh, and, and, you know, for, for us niggas that's in it, like, I, I don't know how much more of it I could stand. Yeah. Like, especially with people that I'm fly with who I enjoy. Like, so that that one touched me. I was just glad that everything was cool. Nah, for sure, man. That shit crazy, bro. Like, I, that's, I, that's why it threw me off, too. Like, man, like. Yeah, but I've since. Been, so, I've been retired. Like you said, I've been retired for so long. But since, so, but, but since then, let me ask, let me ask you something. But but, but since then, have you slowed down with leaving some of the emojis under the beautiful women on Instagram's comments? No, I, I, I think, Still man, you know, it. that's, that's, oh, I mean, did I, did I put an emoji under the wrong one? I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I certainly <laughs> hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. I, I mean, hope not. You know, Joe, like, I don't know how you be doing it, but you, you figure it out, bro. <laughs> I do it from home. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go outside. <laughs> like, hold on, Joe. How did you pull that one off? Hey, why are you super <laughs> lyrical niggas like like these fine chicks, man? Why, we just got to leave emojis and shit. Right. right. A, That's all f- I do, though, man. It's, just be like, it's, it's all in fun. That's it. Yeah, no, true. True indeed. Listen, so, so we, re- we read your post. We read, uh-huh. we read your post about you looking for a situation. I had a few mm-hmm. jokes, but the truth of the matter is, like, we do need your album. For real, yeah, that yeah, man. You know, man, with 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 music and you know the type of music that we do, bro. It's like it's heavily sample driven. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of people are like, man, put it out yourself and do this. But the caliber of artists, unfortunately, I get Don't to work, work with, they ain't gonna just come out of the house for no ten thousand dollar video. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like traveling, finna fly. To Atlanta to do no five thousand seventy five hundred dollar video, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it's but Trav like, wasn't. Right. But Trav wasn't on your your last album, and I loved it. Oh yeah, yes, he was exactly, on your last but album. But when I went in to shoot, the, try to shoot the video, the uh, label like, yeah. hey man, got to be a hundred thousand. They got to be he need this, that, this, this, this. 
and that's what a lot of times, like a lot of people, yeah, yeah, I can do this independently, but you know, I spend a lot of money independently just putting it together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then when it comes to marketing it, you know, you want to be able to market these songs just as just as big as they are, just far as off name or sound. You know what I mean? So I just like at this point, I need, like I say, I need that partner. It ain't like I'm going in there as an artist anymore. I, I feel like I made mm-hmm. enough to be able to like come in there and, and, and ask for certain things or ask for a more favorable situation and but it's you know, be able to retain. Yeah, it's but with the, go ahead, no, go ahead, with, with, with the relationships that you do have with these artists, they, this ain't just like, uh, let me reach out. You've worked with these people. Right. You, you would want to take the major route of owing back a huge budget just to do a video and pay them their actual fee rather than going with like an empire where you could still get some upfront budget money and pay them on some friend shit and still keep most of the rights to your music. I mean, that's that's what I am doing. You know what I'm saying? I, I do have that, like, uh, you know, it's beautiful that you said that Gazi is calling me tonight. Yeah, I, so, I, I said before this, I think everything you said in this post sounds, and it, not just Empire, but labels like Empire, it makes the most sense to me for the type of music you one, make. One thing, like I said, one thing I do want to do is like this. Uh, some artists, like, I, I will give you this example. A lot of times we get into this independent stage because you do have Atlanta artists that have a lot of money. So a lot of times these labels lean on that. You get what I'm saying? But what these guys got to go through to be able to put their album on out and do and own their masters and all that, I'd rather be a traditional artist with a more favorable situation and do it up front in the right way. Because in Atlanta, like I said, niggas are stepping on niggas, niggas shooting it out, niggas selling a lot of this, niggas doing time for that to be able to get that 400000 to be able to put that behind that record. You know what I'm saying? So in my how I'm looking at it is like, let me get a partner who I'm bringing this album already done, already got great artists on it. So all it's a lot of equity in it already. So mm-hmm. now I, have, I do have leverage because the option is putting it out myself. I do have that option. Is, it, is this album sure better than is this album better than No Dope on Sunday? Relax, relax, it's three relax. Times stop. Don't, that's not that you're a liar. <laughs> no, no, you're I lying. promise you, bro. How you know I that? Promise. That ain't you can't even say that. That's our job to say it. The fans. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a definitely. But if y'all like No Dope on Sunday, I really didn't have no budget, no nothing to do uh, No Dope on Sunday. That's kind of our point to you. Yeah, you know, that you shit right there. You don't need you don't need that to get to the magic. And that album was magical. Well, even when I played it today, I was like, man, I feel like I would get this nigga, but man, it'd be tough. <laughs> <laughs> and no, yeah, again, no, and again no, the look, expenses real, but you work with these you know, artists so you, you're not you, the one reaching out for the favor though. what you you've say? been able to you've been able to you know move your career in a different way you've been able to get in certain rooms you know you kind of docile so I, if i if i wrote if i wrote the word the on sicko mode travis would have to show up wherever i am you would think that I, I, me, trust me. <laughs> I know I, he's a megastar, so I get that it's tough. It's tough getting right. him to move, but god damn, man. I mean, you'll be surprised, like, bro. You don't want niggas don't want to see me there, cause then who gonna help him? Exactly. Well, well, Sai, let me ask you to that. When That's you, so when sad, you said man. When you said in that caption, "Who I've been signed to in the past hinders me from getting the opportunity I deserve." Right. Do you feel like being signed to good music and the opportunities you've gotten as an artist? whether that be features or albums that you have been put on or writing credits, what part do you think you haven't deserved in that opportunity with good music and what would you want out of it instead? Well, you know, to be, to be truthful, bro, I never was signed to good music. Okay. I've never been signed to good music. Okay. Unfortunately, I was signed to Boo, and that's Akon, brother. I know Boo. And he had a deal, a label deal at Def Jam at that time. But, you know, you know, he did what he could do. But, you know, he's from Atlanta as well. And he wanted mm-hmm. me to do it the Atlanta route. He knew I had a street crew. He wanted me to kind of run up, run mm-hmm. up a check and do it like the, the Atlanta dudes. And I ain't really want to go back to my life because I was kind of in it with some different kind of gangsters. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Still. just the regular criminals on the street getting money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So once I was able to leave the street, I definitely retired. I didn't want to go back. So 
you know, dudes finessing your budget and figuring out how to, you know, get a little extra money out of it. Yeah. When it's time for you to use it, that money ain't there. You get what I'm saying? So I was already on Def Jam for a year before I ever met Kanye. When I met Kanye, he tried to get me out of my deal, but Boo and Khan really wasn't budging. But they like, man, you already on Def Jam, so just let us do that. Ye kind of got fed up with him because this ain't the $5 billion Ye yet. This is still $30 million in debt. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Yeah. He ain't mm-hmm. been out in two, three years. So he was just like, man, come with me, bro. Come, you know, help help me create and we'll figure out your situation mm. in the in the in the future. And then I just became good at that, that I kind of like understood getting my publishing and I kind of got myself out of my the deal with Boo and all them. And then that's when I was able to put out No Dope on Sundays. Mm. So you are but free. Then, so you're free of the Boo situation. Yeah, I'm free of everything. I'm free of Def Jam, everything. It was just beautiful. You know, wow. early on in my career, I was signed to some street dudes that people didn't want to deal with. Then I got with Akon and them, and it just got messy. Then they didn't want to deal with them. And then a lot of people thought I was signing Yay, and niggas really don't want to deal with him. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, I just had to put the filler up to let people know, like, I'm a free agent. I'm able to do whatever I want to do with my music and my career. So that's why I, that's why I really let that message do, out. Do you have Do you have a preferred destination? Uh, my preferred destination. Uh, I really just want to go with somebody who really want to work with me. But I'm I'm a Interscope. That's my. If it was Interscope, that's like my favorite. Uh, secondly, I would love to like Empire or Rock Nation, somebody that's like hands on or like black owned that kind of understand it, but still on a high level of thinking. And after that, it's just whoever you know whoever wants to you know do business with me and be part of history got you uh okay. man i hope we don't have to suffer through this process i want some you give us a leak or something man god damn it yeah man give us a freestyle yeah, like we need that something. music man Some just to yeah, hold I got, us over like, three song ep even no yeah, samples. i mean that's what that's what i was looking at doing as well like doing a, a ep but you know i grew up on like you know, DMX, Joe Buttons, fucking Nas, Jay, they had bodies of work. Yeah. Like, I don't think people really give you the respect. I'm going to just say this, even though fall. we can battle anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but your no, we first album, bro, was so, like, so detailed. It has so many different emotions. It has so many different stories and how you speak about the alcoholism and I used to just, you know, you smoke cigarettes. All I just remember just how I used to feel like, damn, this nigga's so honest, bro. I yeah. don't even hear rappers. And, yeah. and to me, that's what drew me to, to your style and to your, you know, your music and your album. I got, like I said, I got a homegirl who know your album from front to back. She a female. Tell her, say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, so why, why, why like, don't you think you could do that no, no, on like a three pack? Don't, don't interrupt him when he's bigging me up. No, no it's fine. That's, that's my biggest thing. That I'm just, I'm obsessed with bodies of work. Mm-hmm. I'm really not cool with releasing a single and releasing an a, 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 a EP. I'm like, I want y'all to hear this cold concept I put together. I know it's a I concept. Work. What's the title of it? I know it's a concept. What is it? Well, I got, actually, I got three albums though, Joe. They all done. So I'm gonna mm. give you all three of them. I got Slick Woke. I huh. got the Book of Egot. That I don't know if you know what the Egot that's is. That's Emmy that. Grammy Oscar Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got the Spook that's set by the door. I need that middle one. I need to hear that Egot. You know what I'm saying? And they all different. They all polar opposites. Like I'm a t- I'm just showing my full diversity in the next 12 to 18 months when I release these three albums. So. I just been collect over the past two and a half years. I just been collecting, and you know, I mean, I got Benny, I got Westside Gun, I got Mozzie, I got Corday, I got Trav. It's just I got everything on these three albums, and this is how I wanted to go out because I'm looking to move in more into film, more into just you know the executive side of you know the music business since I've been in it so long and. I would love to change another artist's life because I've been through so much in the music industry that, you know, I I, I want to right my wrongs. Like, almost mm-hmm. like, let me show y'all how y'all supposed to do an artist. Let mm-hmm. me show y'all how y'all supposed to 
I get that. Manage him and different things. So that's that's my plan for the next 12 to 18 months. So y'all can be looking out for all that. I'll make sure you get some exclusives. Hell Bucket, yeah. Nigga. This I get my... you. Hey, I'll bring you out the I bring you out the retirement, bro. Put you on one of these roles. Listen, we can go, him. we can go back and forth on the beat. That would be awesome, man. I'm a I'm a huge for fan, sure. and that's a short list of people. You definitely on it. The fans gonna tell me I'm dick riding, but I don't care. Uh your pitmanship <laughs> is where it needs to be. This is my yeah. last label question for you. What's up? Do you have a certain number in your head that you need before you even entertain a conversation with any of the labels? Uh, definitely. Is it definitely. a difficult deal to get done? No, it's not a difficult deal to get done because the music is already done. Got it. But I do want to, I am going to ask for something because I want to be able to hold these folks accountable. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times I go in there on this humble approach and let them lowball me. And if you don't make them spend no money, they ain't really pressed to get it back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you make them spend a decent coin, <clears throat> yeah, they're going to be looking back. and like, hey, I need that back. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's kind of mm -hmm. where I'm at with the uh with the, the label situation. Got it. Listen, man, so, me, me, you, Benny, and Royce, book it. Book it. But but book, 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 book it Dano, man. I'll go practice for a few months, get ready. Uh, now y'all gotta, gotta get Conway on that though. Y'all gotta get Conway on that. Uh, now you making the song six minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah like, right, 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 right. It can't be under six. <laughs> it can't Hell be under yeah. six. Nah. Go get Conway on that thing. Y'all go crazy. Yo, but now we sure. we should kick it aside. We're gonna kick, uh, I want to talk to you off offline. They really gonna say I'm dick riding now, but yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk offline. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to just help any way that I could. I don't, I don't think more years should go by without sure. us hearing from you. I don't. Yeah. Hey man, look, listen, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, I'm very humble, bro. Like a lot of times, I kind of had to just open up, man. This this situation that just happened to me a few. A few weeks ago, man, kind of just put things in perspective for me. You know, I got this, I've been trained on the street code shit and not really talk about your life and talk about if anything goes wrong with a label, most people would just lash out and be like, man, this nigga didn't do this and this nigga didn't do that. I really don't do that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I kind of just keep it and take my punches how they go. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I think people want to know more about me, more about my life. Why am I this mystique individual? So I just felt like it's when I did Adam and I did Vlad and now you guys are calling, it's like, I kind of got to open up and let people know You did who Vlad? I am what the hell are you Vlad. doing on Vlad? Man, because I don't see, you know, I, I see a lot of guys got a, you know, you know, a thing about Vlad, but listen, I ain't in the streets no more. He can ask me what he want to ask me. I ain't no <laughs> you know what I mean? If you these niggas who teeter in the line, they can't yeah. go on there and really explain themselves or be able to articulate right. themselves because <laughs> they still doing shit they don't supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he he looking at them like, man, I remember when I interviewed Joe Buttons when he came out, <laughs> yeah. he was a rapper. I can ask Joe Buttons anything I wanted to ask him. But these niggas, you can't really ask them that because they really ain't Rapper, full yeah. fledged rappers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not at all. So, so they, it's good. All, they first line be like, "What they first line be like, Joe? I ain't. I'm a street nigga. Yeah. I ain't a rapper." They'll tell you. They'll tell you exactly what said there. <laughs> rap. Exactly. So I'm a rapper, bro. I, I'm proud to be one. I'm proud to be an MC, and I love hip hop. So. Yeah, it's me. it's good that you humble, man. But Vasaha, please understand that you are one of the best niggas at this rap shit. Like oh yeah, for sure. that, man. No, nah, I just need you, sure. I, I just need you to hear me say it because like there's a you know we it's a lot of niggas out here that claim they nice and claim they can rap, but just be clear that you are one of the few that time and time again, every time you step out, you show and prove. So we just want to salute you. Yo, she was my little sweetie pie. Mm. Can't believe I deserted her. Huh? Come that on. Was crazy, man. Bro. That ball was crazy. That ball was crazy. I'm going to tear your ass up when I get to you, goddammit. You too nice. I'm going to learn your nice ass a good lesson. <laughs> so we love you, man. I'm going to talk to you up here. All right, man, for sure, man. Hit me up. It's all love, bro. One, bro. All right, fam. Peace. All right, y'all be beautiful. Listen, man. When the jokes get, when it's all, when it's all said and done, I mean, we, we talk shit as elite MCs, but I'm letting this rock for a little bit. The production value, I didn't know this was all independent too. The production value, fuck the features. This sounded expensive, the production. Yeah, you can cut him off.
You can cut him off this whole album. It sounds good. It's oh. insane. So much, so much so, when I listen to this today, they really going to say I'm dick riding now. The, some of the songs I really didn't like uh, on the second half of the album originally, I love today. Mm. I love today. Well, that shit with Kanye that, and the song right after that. But anyway. Yeah. Just a... Yup. Y'all know his conceptual ass got three concepts somewhere. <laughs> I want to hear him. I want to get into into that point when this is over. Wait a minute! It's under Sony. Yo, me, Sahai, uh, Benny Royce, uh, Conway, you said? Ooh, that's the spitters. Anybody missing off there? Right now? Banks, I got to hear something before I put you on there. Yeah, that, that little snippet know, Banks put I out. Know, I know. You ain't say nothing about it. I know. <laughs> nah, you phony. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to link him to <laughs> yeah, you better try, call, try to help put that together. Better call God damn it. What? Fuck, I told you I'm trying to put together a whole Banks project. Yeah, he different. I can't, I can't hear all that, man. He bugged out. I thought that was interesting when he said, uh, I don't really want to do the little three-pack of the freestyle. What well, didn't he say freestyle, but just the quick little Lucy joints because I come from the era of like DMX and people that put out full bodies of work. Understand that point. I totally do. But I do think artists like DMX, Hove, everybody do adapt to their time and would have done the three-pack thing. Drake comes from that you era would, you would. and adapts. You're, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we, well, I first of all, we can't prove it, so I'm not wrong. So that's a weird response. But I think you're wrong. You don't think that someone like a X or a Hove or even the greats from the '90s didn't adapt to their time and wouldn't have done so with the internet as well? Because Hove even did that that way with freestyles and other little Lucy shit. I agree with you there. I think you are compounding two different points. I think that the artists you name. Uh, I, I, I named uh, the artists adapt, he named. Adapt to the time. I came up with those artists because he named them. I don't think that DMX at any point in his career was putting out a three pack. Even, I disagree. Even if that was the way of the land, yeah. him and who he he was. Maybe Hove. Who else did you name? Well, I, I went off the artist. He said, he said Hove and, and DMX. He said Hove, X, me, and one more and Nas. Maybe he put me there just as a, as a respect thing. I know I don't belong there, but X. Here's the thing, though. X in a three pack? No. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Can, the I, rest can, I, of can them, I can yeah. I can I quickly quickly give a, a response to that and why yeah. I think X would? I've seen a lot of the new age artists that, and I don't want to make this a, a bad thing, but let's just go off X's admitted past that uh, were homeless drug addicts, uh, had been down on their luck in certain cases, adapt to the whole internet culture and only focused on the internet culture. And the internet culture has to do with three packs. So I could totally see DMX, who is an incredibly intelligent person and artist that just suffered from an addiction, doing that. I could totally see X doing that. X even, knew exactly what he was doing through that that whole first two album shit. That's why. I'm, yeah. And and he's and he adapted to the times more and saying, yeah, I'm putting out two albums in one year. No one's done that shit, and they're both gonna go number one. Roy and I can find a debate out of anything. Anything yes, he right. says, I can pull a debate out of it. I don't believe that three I packs. I think that's what anybody. I, I don't I don't believe that three <laughs> yeah. packs are an internet thing. They are. I don't. How I, could I put I think, out a three think, pack otherwise? How could you? Any way you want. You could walk around and sell it. You could do whatever you want. I don't EPs know. existed before the internet. Yeah, I don't of think that, they did. that's not I'm not saying that. But not that, very but, common and, in hip-hop. And, and the common the common uh to feed no for the, it to be so common today, I think is a direct response to label activity, not internet activity. No, I was going off what you said to Sahai and yo, feed feed us real quick, man. We've been waiting, we've been waiting. To feed yeah, I your fan I need okay, something. That's what I'm speaking to. To feed your fan base real quick. Like, come on. It's it's been a couple years. Let me get a little Three pack. Let me get two records, two pack single. Not even a real single, but one little record. 
Yeah, I could totally see X and everyone from that era doing that. They they did it. They just did it in their era style. And they were innovative and changed and went with the times. They would do the same thing in the internet era. They definitely would. Whatever. They were geniuses. They would do that. Whatever side of this argument that I need to be on for him side to actually release a three pack <laughs> is where I fall. Well, that that was that's what I got. I didn't want to interrupt the conversation that was at hand, but I would have liked to say to Saha that exact thing. Well, Saha calling back for the smoke. I said, <laughs> "Yo, yo what up? why lie?" Yo, yo, niggas make the All Star game and answer the phone different. You hear this, yeah, nigga? Yeah, yeah. You sound, you sound crazy now that you are All Star. Yeah. I, I ain't gonna hold you, man. We've that been, energy was uh, crazy uh, just now. We've we been calling you for a month. <laughs> they started tallying votes, and we just yeah. can't buy you no more. <laughs> I, I voted for you, nigga. <laughs> Act like it. <laughs> Julius, congratulations. Congratulations, uh, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It ain't even nothing for me to say. I can't even believe this. I can't believe y'all are four and a half Fourth back place? of first. Fourth place? No, no. Four and a half back of first. Oh, it ain't bad. over. Pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> hey, hey, it, Jude. It, it ain't over, Joe? Hey, 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 Jude. The Nets want to keep getting fly. The next one, yeah, Kyrie home today. All right. <laughs> hey, James got a headache. He's chilling tonight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The young, young boy's playing today. <laughs> Mm. Oh, oh man, y'all Y'all got to come, man. When it opened up for real, y'all got to come, bro. Gotta come through. Now, I'm not getting out there with them weird ass white boys celebrating outside the garden after you <laughs> niggas went. I keep seeing the club niggas is too excited. They jumped me. Yeah, man. I told the nigga. I said, yo, the, the the team ain't been this good in years. Like Jules, like yo, this shit, this is crazy though. Like this is insane. Well, Jules, you just oh, got sorry. here, right? So is this even like, is this even like, like, do you know about? Crazy New York Knicks fans and like the drought, how long it's been, the Pat Finger Rolls, uh, Hubert, uh, John Starks three for 19, the Hubert Davis foul. Like, you just got here and you kind of young. But for us, oh my God, just to see it done the right way. Forget about y'all for a minute, Julius. Leon Rose, Kenny Payne, uh, World Wide West, mm-hmm. Tibbs, Mike Woodson. Our last winning season was Mike Woodson at the helm. Mm-hmm. The organization seems to have got it right. We building through the draft. Wow, quickly, wow, topping. And then you, nigga, it's up. <laughs> Yo, what, what are we doing, man? <laughs> oh, man, I told you. I told you when we talked uh, a couple months ago. I said, I said it's different, man. It's a different vibe. Yo, tell. It's a different energy. Tell Noel New Orleans my bad. Yeah, 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 because you was killing yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. him. You was kind of taking his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, give my man his respect, bro. Give my man his respect. But was he like yeah, this nah. in Dallas? He getting, he going crazy in New York. What New York pussy he man. getting? He going, <laughs> nah, he like, he acting like, he like he, it here. He want to, he want to stay. Extension. Yeah, he want to stay. He playing like he yeah. want to stay. Now he going so crazy. You're wild. You're nah, wild. You know, you know the deal. I just, listen. He's doing unbelievable shit out there. Niggas ain't missed a beat since uh since Mitch went down. When he get back, I'm just hype. I'm just hype. Hey, 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 and hey, hey, we could drug one of them Dallas niggas, get them right back on that losing streak. We got their draft pick. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We get Luke up out of here and get that draft pick. We out of here, man. What happens next year? Oh, man. I know I he can't know, say man. nothing to what I'm saying. I definitely, I definitely, I definitely feel the energy, though, bro. The energy in the city is crazy right now, so we got to keep pushing it on. So. You niggas might as well go ahead and hug Efred Payton. <laughs> you know what, bro? <laughs> No, you don't say nothing. You get in trouble. Yeah, I wasn't. I, <laughs> you had a good season. Say, you you don't nah, say but, words. Now nah, he nah, know. We everything. spoke. We now nah, we spoke uh, last year, and I was like, "Yo, I, I wasn't big on I this like game." Him, though. But now, like, I yeah, like him though. Yeah, I like him too. Yeah. I like the Nick team, man. Yo, this reminds me of uh, the Steve Novak, Jason Kidd team that I liked a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rashid Wallace, the veterans mm-hmm. on that team. Mm-hmm. I like that team a lot. This team reminds me hey. of that. Can, what? Hey, while we while we talking about it, give respect to my man Tibbs too, bro. Doing a hell of a job. Coach, sure. coach of the year candidate in, sure. in my book. For sure. Coach, coach of the year candidate. I'm not even worried about him playing you 57 minutes a night. Go ahead and run your little <laughs> legs wild. <laughs> Yo, can you speak? Can you speak to what what quickly looked like in person? <laughs> Yo, now come on, he, he do he stepping back. Nah, he open. Come he on, he open. quick, 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 bro. He just he a confident dude, dog. Like, you 
you see his whole slide on the court, bro. He's confident. You know what I mean? He don't care to make mistakes. He's just out there hooping, playing free. And I think a lot of that he did because he worked his ass off. So and it's easy to be confident. I mean, when you work your ass off, quick, quick, quick hooping, bro. I, and I've never seen a rookie get this many calls ever in my life. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. I think I think that's due to that floater, though. The no, floater? it's the floater, but he, he know how to draw fouls and all that type of stuff, bro. So. You know how to step back and jay your fucking face out from 35 and leave his hand in the air, too. <laughs> Yo, Jules, between 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 us and just the millions of people that listen every week, you cried when you became an all-star? Tell the truth. I, absolutely. I respect that. Absolutely. That's real shit. I respect absolutely. that. That's real. I respect absolutely. it. If, 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 dudes, if dudes knew my journey, from, from the beginning when I started, broke my leg my first game uh, of my career, everything I had to be through, hell yeah. This nigga passing out the double team now, man. If they, these niggas don't stop, stop playing with us. Yo, why are they playing with us, man? Yo, playoff, playoff game in New York. I'm there, man. Yo, D Rose back. Yes, sir. Mm, yes, sir. That was a sneaky. That was a sneaky genius move, man. Yes, sir. Shout out. You hooping too? Mm. Yo, do you feel? Do you, Jules? Do you feel any responsibility now that now that the Knicks? Are halfway decent and there's hope out here. Like during the off season, well, wait, we gotta sign him first, right? No, that's okay, happening. That's happening. That's happening. That's we, happening. We, we, yeah, we got that. Yeah. That's, wait, that's wait, happening. wait. I'm gonna chummy chummy with this nigga. He might try to leave. <laughs> Yo, Jules, man. Yeah. I already told. Hey, Jules. I already told you. I said if you try to leave, Yo, nigga, New York will have your ass, buddy. <laughs> but listen, real quick. If if you if you stay, I know that's big business with that. Do you feel any responsibility to? attempt to speak to some other free agents about just the change in culture and organization in New York and try to lure anybody that maybe could help? Not big, big, big names. I'm, I'm not talking about all that mm-hmm. bullshit. Mm-hmm. Just key names that could help. Yeah. Uh, I mean, absolutely. But it got to be the right. It got to be the right fit. You know what I mean? It's, like I said, everything we're doing now is different, bro. And uh, dudes got to be willing to buy into what we're doing. So everybody, it's, this, ain't, this ain't meant for everybody. So, you know what I mean? That would be the right person, right fit, uh, right situation. None of that ego shit, none of that diva shit. No, none of that. None of that. We trying to hoop in games. Right. I need to I need to see that. I need to see that C, that C on, on Jules' jersey. Mm. I don't know what the hole up is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I heard about that. I, I didn't know that was a big deal out here. I mean. It is with the Yankees. It is with the Knicks, too. It's a long-time <laughs> Knicks fan. Like, only, only big dog Knicks have gotten that C, and you've earned it. So I think the fans are showing you your appreciation, but for for this to really end the way it's supposed to end, maybe at the start of next season we get that C, man. You you, you leading these boys. You leading these boys. I, I even saw you walk Obi to the bench one night. <laughs> <laughs> Come sit down over here, man. <laughs> Let me talk to you. Don't control, do that shit right? again. That's my God. Don't, don't do that. No, I like Obi. I like Obi. I like don't Obi. do that. I like him. I like him. Right, cool. Playoffs, we up, man. Yo, who you hoping for? <laughs> I know you matter, can't say. Man. Don't matter, man. We got to play matter. our best game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want none of that political it shit. Don't nigga. We, we'll talk, we'll talk over here. Yeah, we'll talk <laughs> over here. Them, them Pacer niggas think we sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> niggas want yeah. with the Pacers. <laughs> they, they, they think it's up for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive to Indiana, nigga. That's all. <laughs> Jules Love, man. Playoffs is on. We there. All right, man. I'll... Later. I don't like that with sports where they can't be honest the way yeah, everyone else fine. can. Like it's corny that that because yeah. he can't do that. You know he, he can't never can. Do that. It would ruin everything. Of yeah. course, but it's sports. Like he should be able to say that. Yeah, I hate that. That's the culture with sports. Yeah, should, that's why. Should be able to wear your do rag on the bench if you're not playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. That was a great two calls. Yeah, it was. Shout out to Jules, man. For sure. And Sai. And Sai. Yeah, two sure. really good guys, man. Go ahead and make Ju- uh, Jules that captain, man. I don't know what the fuck they they thought. What are they doing? I, that's I know they stopped doing it for a while. Put but that pin to yeah, pin I was wondering if they even still did. They that stopped doing it, but but who did they? Mello was a captain. Oh, was he? Okay, but that Pat was a captain. That's why I said Mason it was a big. or Oakley, the, one of them. The Pat era. Somebody it, big. Jules would be a captain. I don't feel like I've seen a C in well, an NBA for, jersey and when giving you that captain. It's been a while. Did Mello have the C on there? Though? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And demand them and demand it too. It's up. Pay it. Pay it. Yeah. Pay it. You're saying they're averaging 23, 
ten and five. <laughs> well, we have way through the season. Let's just, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I need, and I, love, I need the Mavs to lose some more. The Mavs keep losing. They might be in trouble in a few years. Listen, man, I want to thank Sahai for calling. I want to thank Jules, Jules for calling. I'm so happy for both of them brothers, man. Yes, sir. It may it, it does it does excite me. It's a part of me getting vulnerable <laughs> here with y'all. But it does excite me when people that I'm I truly am invested in. I turned it down. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Yeah. It uh it does excite me when people that I'm like truly invested in personally, when I'm personally that I personally root for. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody says that. Mm-hmm. Everybody says, oh, we root for everybody. No, I don't. I don't root for everybody. <laughs> so when the people that I do root for, like, get to getting it, like, watching the Knicks, like, enjoy each other. Yeah. It was some dude after the game. He still had his whole warm-up on. I didn't know, have no idea who he was. And he was celebrating like he had just scored 40 with the gang. Mm-hmm. And they treated him the same way. As a long-tenured Knicks fan, I ain't seen it you like seen that. that in a while, yeah. Yeah. I ain't seen it like that, smiling, high-fiving, arms around each other, headed to the locker room. I ain't even seen Tibbs smile before this year. Like, think about it. <laughs> yeah, Julie like, spoke honestly, about, we spoke, this, me and Julie this, spoke about that um, in, in private. He said, he yeah. told me, he said, yo, bro, the, the energy, the chemistry here, he was like, no ego. He was like, it, it's just different. He was like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all, people going to start to see it. Like, it's just different. Like, we really fuck with each other. I seen quickly hit a shot. A shot that he probably shouldn't have taken, and they panned to the bench, and Tibbs just smiled. They, do you know that shit that they showed Steve Kerr doing every time Curry yeah, take yeah, a shot yeah, that yeah. he just shouldn't take? I was yeah. like, what you going to say? Right. Like, Tibbs did one of those. I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah. We don't get that. <laughs> we don't get one of those. Yeah. So happy for them. To hear Sahai, like, focus on whatever the next step in the mission is after almost being assassinated. Mm-hmm. And I use that term purposely incorrectly yeah man wow how how do you not smile more death there's more death back to my theory about the same amount of death uh in 2021 that occurred in, in 2020 maybe we just a bit more desensitized uh a bit more accustomed to it but shit's still fucked up out here i encourage everybody to move with caution be careful Keep your eyes on the prize, head down until the job is done, man. It ain't too much time for fun in New York City. This ain't Atlanta. This ain't Texas. This ain't them other spots, man. We up here getting to it. And if you're not getting to it, then you probably won't be afforded the ability to stay here in the near future. With that said, thank you all for an amazing pod. This was real, 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 real good, man. It was. Real good. (laughs) Rest in peace, Bunny Whaler, too, now that you mentioned it. Yes. Yes. Legend, legend, legend. legend. Bunny Whaler, sure. Rest in peace. While we at that, let me just make sure that my rest in pieces are finished. Let me just see here. Vernon Jordan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. I learned that from D Nice today. That Vernon Jordan passed. Mm-hmm. Turn up Saha for a minute. Yo, man, keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be here. Until the next time, I bid you adieu. Farewell. Adios. Arrivederci. Hasta la vista. So long. Goodbye. Do remember, life is a series of moments and moments pass. So let's make this one last as if it's all that we have. While we're at it, do remember that the baddies are insecure. The stagnant women want to travel. And the closed-minded women want you to teach them things. Grab an ibuprofen. And enjoy your headache. I'm turning this side out real quick. That's what used to be happening, man. Who knew these niggas was killers while we was eating corned beef hash? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga just ordered the most beautiful meal at the diner. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga Blow your fuck. Every, and, t- every time you've had corned beef hash at the diner, there's probably a killer around. <laughs> No, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had some good corned beef hash in a minute.
Neither. And boy, did the Sahai in that those brief few minutes that he spoke to us, he cleared up so much for me with his contract situation. Mm-hmm. That's kind of some of the info I've been looking for from him. Mm. I never heard anything about him being signed to Boo, Akon. Well, I always thought how Kanye to... stepped in and tried to do something but couldn't. Said, mm. "Come on, we'll work. Figure this out later." See, now that story is relatable, understandable. I get that now. Mm. I didn't get it before oh. where it looked like you just with somebody and you repping for somebody that you signed to and even through their mistakes you'd like it just looked Yeah, I was thought that the makes Blue a lot more sense. music thing was official. I I thought I Kanye thought stepped in. I I always thought that. Also real interesting hearing him say that my beautiful dark twisted fantasy yay was 30 million in debt. That yeah, an yeah. Expensive album, I'm sure. Yeah. What, I don't know I just if it's us as life. consumers view it that way. We just view it like, wow, what a classic. Probably one of the best albums right. to come out that decade. Yeah, Elton John and Rihanna singing background vocals <laughs> in one song. No, no, <laughs> nobody gets to how much that may have costed oh, yeah. and, right. and cost, right. cost it. And did he recoup? Like, mm-hmm. we would never ask that about, nigga, don't cut this shit back on. And, and his other ventures outside of just that expensive album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, yeah, he spent a lot of money on a lot of shit. How does There's Con- a reason there was no tour on that album. Mm-hmm. How does Kanye West do a deal with Gap and not be put on the board? Nobody knows he why. He wasn't put on the board? That, that, what, that was his that, beef. By, by his mouth. Oh. It's odd. Yeah. It's just odd. We really? out of here, man. Peace and leave. Listen, I was just as shocked as you, Ma. That was his beef. He said he, he he's not on the board of Nike. I mean, not Nike. Uh, Adidas? Gap or Adidas. He's not on the board at Adidas. That's the, that's, that is Adidas at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know we we gloss over it a lot here. That's crazy. And people are tired of hearing my redundant ass words. Mm-hmm. That's wild. That's it's wild. not a small feat. That's fucking no. wild. It's not easy. Now that's wild. Now he should be in a different class theoretically, but when we think of all that blacks have to accomplish for sure to be viewed in the same light then i mean it's not so shocking but yeah it's still wrong <laughs> it takes a lot to yeah, you man. kanye west we all in this room know that there's kanye west but i don't know who's on the board at gap right and i don't know how they feel about my beautiful dark twisted fantasy like <laughs> They could be 90 years old just holding down the old nigga at Gap board vibe. Yeah, like, I don't move. know. They need to get out the way. Well, that's what Dave Chappelle was saying about... Uh, yeah, get out the way. Uh, my guy over there at Viacom and just some of the younger new people that don't know some of the old archaic ways of doing business. If y'all want to sell the same fucking polos and have your company flop, cool. Keep these people off the board. Yo, Saturday we'll get into the Nike reseller thing. Um, I have a few thoughts on mental health that I've been dying to get out for the last few weeks that I have not. Saturday, I got that for y'all. Shout out to the Patronies, man. Subscribe Always. subscribe to the Patreon. We're going to try a few different things, one of which is uploading the, the regular pod with the, with the, with the without edits. Yeah, we I'm reading the comments <laughs> and shit, man. Give my props, nigga. You heard what I said. I really didn't hear. I was reading a text. Oh, you didn't hear. Without what did you edits. say? <laughs> I said we uploading uh, the regular pod to Patreon without edits. We didn't edit anything. But we didn't, though. That was one take? That was our one take? That was Come one on, take. Man. Yeah. Come on, man. Who else? Straight through. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's us, us man. <laughs> we got to get into it's us one day. <laughs> when he was like, yo, it's us. But, wait, yeah, but who are Come you on, still? Come on, man. <laughs> Listen, this is us. I don't know who they are. Uh, but but this is us. <laughs> All right, we out of here. Y'all hold it down, man.